Work Hard, Playlist Hard, second edition, written and narrated by Mike Warner. Introduction. This book shares everything I wish I knew when I started out. It also details vital parts of my journey, from a keen music lover and starving music producer to a successful streaming music nerd who makes a living in this beautiful, crazy industry. It is the result of many conversations with friends, artists, labels, and managers. I suggest grabbing a pen and paper. I've been a music lover my entire life, with a music collection of funk, hip-hop, punk, rock, electronic, ska, and everything in between. I spent 20 years DJing, hosted multiple podcasts and radio shows, helped numerous artists transition to becoming independent. I also produced music under various aliases and worked with a few background music services. After many years of trying to break into the music industry, applying to multiple jobs, I concluded that my resume was not strong enough. I decided to build my own opportunities through self-education. What I've learned is that artists today have more power, tools and opportunity than ever before. They just need to be given the right knowledge to succeed. Many pieces of advice I share are inspired by a question from an artist. This book is written as though I am telling you how to set up an artist for success through the use of streaming services, all while building value in your brand through strong playlist curation. These insights are for artists, managers, label reps, or any of the many new roles in the music industry. This second edition is no longer just focused on playlist pitching and curation. It has grown into so much more than that. It's packed full of tools and features that are available to help an artist get their music in front of a wider audience and provide them with strategies for long-term growth across many platforms. That being said, sections of this book will still be similar to the first edition with its focus on playlists and curation. In addition, you'll see a focus on online presence, data, tools, and all of the things that can help an artist to grow. Without further ado, welcome to Work Hard, Playlist Hard, the second edition. Here we go. Types of playlists. What is a playlist? A playlist is a list of songs that can be listened to through a DSP. The playlist can be listened to either sequentially or in a shuffled order. DSP means Digital Service Provider. A DSP can be a retail store like iTunes or a music streaming provider such as Spotify, Apple Music or Deezer. Playlists have existed for many years in many mediums, from cassette tapes to radio, but we will exclusively be referring to playlists on DSPs. Playlists can help a new audience to discover your music through association. Similar to changing stations on your TV or radio stations in your car, playlists offer a variety of music from both independent and label artists. Over 75,000 songs are added to a DSP every single day in the United States alone. Let that sink in for a second. Playlists help you to stand out from all of the other songs. Think of them as a public showcase of music with uncapped potential reach. Artists have found themselves being able to create major tours, sign lucrative record deals, gain placement in films and television shows, and even quit their day jobs. These and many other stories are becoming more common as artists find a way to monetize their craft and be strategic with playlist pitching to ensure their music reaches as many ears as possible. There are countless types of playlists out there. Each playlist has a different kind of value and method required. Editorial Playlists Editorial playlists are curated by staff who work directly for the streaming platform. These can provide significant streaming numbers but should not be your only goal, as these curators rarely communicate with artists and their support is never guaranteed. While some of these editorial curators don't have a strong online presence, there are a few exceptions. How can I find an editorial playlist? Editorial playlists are easily identified because the curator username matches the DSP. Spotify, for example, will show created by Spotify on each playlist that they own. As an exercise, take a look at the following editorial playlists. 
Ideally, you should follow playlists that you would like to see your music placed on. This helps you to get a better understanding of what the editors are looking for. On Amazon Music, All Hits, Country Heat, Pop Culture. On Apple Music, Dance XL, New Music Daily, Today's Hits. On Deezer, Acoustic Pop, Deezer Hits, Urban Hits. On Spotify, Beast Mode, Mint, Peaceful Piano, Today's Top Hits. On YouTube Music, Alternative Hot List, Highline R&B, Pop Hot List. Who are these editorial curators? While most editorial curators fly under the radar and prefer to remain a mystery, there are a few that are active on social media. Follow them and familiarise yourself with what they are looking for. Then, when the time is right, make your move. User-generated playlists. Also known as third-party playlists, these are curated by regular users like yourself who make their playlists public for anyone to follow and stream. By making a connection with the owners of these playlists, you may have a better chance of receiving future support from them. One benefit of user-generated playlists is that you have an opportunity to find that user and connect with them through social media, email, or other means. They are usually a lot more accessible than editorial curators. How can I find a user playlist? If you look at the Created By section, under the description you will see a name. Click on that name and it will take you to their profile. You will clearly see the word user on their profile. How do I contact the curator? Here are a few strategies to try and locate playlist owners. Of course, these are only suggestions and may not work for every person. The first one is a sneaky tactic I've found works in some instances. Google Image Search. Google allows you to take a screenshot of the user's profile picture, then upload it to Google and search for matching instances of that image. If the photo is a unique photo of that person, you may find links to their social media or website in the search results. People tend to use the same profile picture across all social media. Visit images.google.com to use this feature. Facebook. Spotify allows users to sign in with their Facebook credentials, which also uses their current Facebook profile photo and name on their Spotify profile. A quick Facebook search can often match the name and photo to the profile in Spotify. Chartmetric. Chartmetric has data for millions of playlists across various DSPs. When possible, the website and social media URLs for the curator will be listed. This can be useful when trying to find a way to contact the curator through social media. Brand playlists. Many brands have utilized playlists to reach their customers outside of their stores. Brand playlists keep customers connected and offer some nice benefits in the way of free advertising. For example, Nike has running playlists. Disney has sing-along playlists. Starbucks has a latte playlists. See what I did there? Celebrities or influencers can also be verified with a brand account. Those are usually very hard to contact without having a direct contact with the management company. Who runs these brand playlists? Usually someone on the marketing team is in charge of curation. However, there are some companies that have a music department which oversees live performances as well as music for TV commercials and playlists. The best way to find a lead is by doing a quick internet search. There's often at least one blog post that spotlights their curators. Background music services. Ask your parents, or maybe even grandparents, what Muzak is, and you may be surprised. This is not a new thing. Background music, also known as in-store or overhead music, has been around for many years. Fortunately, music has evolved from elevator music to feature various music from independent to established artists. This is free money, as I like to say. Most background music services will only add music that is directly licensed to them. 
meaning the only way to get your music played in stores they service and to get paid for that play is to license your music to them. This doesn't mean that they own your music, it means that they have permission to use it. Of course, always read any contract. Imagine shopping in Macy's, hearing your song blasting through the speakers and seeing someone whip out their phone to Shazam it. This additional exposure can lead to a growing fan base on Apple Music and Spotify and other platforms. Shazam now even allows users to directly stream songs previously Shazammed in full. This counts as a play, and you can even add your, quote, my Shazammed tracks, end quote, playlist on both services. To get you started, I have listed a selection of background music services that have previously accepted submissions from me. Reach out via their general email on their website, first asking for their music submission process. Once you have the correct contact information, follow up with your most recent single only. If they like your latest release and want your whole back catalogue of music, they will ask you. Don't send everything in the first email. Mood Media Nightlife Music Play Network RX Music Sound Machine Soundtrack Your Brand Stingray Music and Store Play Tastemaker Playlists These are much more rare to see. In Spotify, when you go to a user's profile, instead of seeing User next to their profile photo, it will say Tastemaker. Rumour has it that tastemakers have earned this status through solid curation. Why are tastemakers so valuable? Spotify doesn't go into great detail about tastemakers, but it's believed that if a tastemaker places a song, this could contribute to a song's placement across various editorial playlists. Where can I find tastemakers? Spotify used to show tastemakers in the Browse section of the app. There used to be a section called Who to Follow that suggested friends and other curators, but this has since been removed. The only current way is to simply ask around and look at the profile page for every user. If you see Tastemaker, copy that URL and add it to a spreadsheet. Start keeping track of these as you come across them. Algorithmic playlists. Curated by robots, fed by metadata, these playlists deliver music to each user based on their listening habits and taste. These playlists include Release Radar, Discover Weekly, and Your Daily Mix on Spotify. One of the best ways to make sure your music has every opportunity to be heard on these playlists is by adding as much detail as possible. When filling out editorial submission forms and uploading the music through your distributor, be sure to always include as much detail as possible. Personalised Editorial These playlists are curated by staff, but playlist songs and order are customised for each listener. For example, if you and someone next to you both open Spotify and follow the playlist called Weekend Hangouts, the playlist will be different for each of you. This is because Spotify creates a pool of up to 600 songs that are available for each personalised editorial playlist depending on the listener. Each listener's playlist is then capped at around 100 songs, resulting in a very different and personalised experience for each individual listener. The good thing about these playlists is that there are more opportunities for more artists to get heard from these playlists because the bank of music is larger. Distributor playlists. It's not uncommon for record labels and distributors to also curate their own playlists. Here are a few examples. Topsify, Filter, Digster. Other distributors also curate under their own names. CD Baby, Ditto, DistroKid, and TuneCore. Artist Playlists. Artist playlists can grow very quickly with the right network of supportive fans. These are extremely valuable as the artist has full control over the music that is featured. It's not uncommon for artists that are no longer creating new music to still have well-maintained playlists. These playlists will always be a home for fans to enjoy their music. Plus, if the playlist has a significant following, it is highly valuable to the artist's manager or label 
who can include songs from similar artists in the playlist to give them a boost as well. Update your playlist regularly. Contributed by Nina Las Vegas. When promoting my own playlist on Spotify, I've found that consistency is key. People return to your playlist if they know you update it regularly. As someone who follows a lot of playlists to find new music, I know I get annoyed when they're barely refreshed. So I try to keep that mentality when working on my own. My track IDs playlist is updated every two weeks and I make sure to promote it across as many platforms as possible. Every two weeks, I do a little drawing, something that my followers have become familiar with since Instagram started. I always tag the smaller emerging artists in my posts when I share, as those are the people that are most excited to share their placements. These days, with TikTok also driving a lot of playlisting awareness, I film myself drawing each little promo tile and post that on the platform. Nina's Track IDs playlist can be found on Spotify. Find out more about Nina at ninalasvegas.com. Podcast and blog playlists. Contributed by Bree Noble. Many podcasts and blogs, especially if they are based on a particular theme, curate playlists from the songs they feature. As the founder of the Women of Substance Music podcast, I produce several themed podcast episodes each year that I curate into playlists. Some examples include the Love Songs for Valentine's series, the Music with a Conscience series, and my Holiday series. Since the podcast is already curated with high-quality music around a very specific theme, combining the songs from the series into a playlist is a perfect fit. I don't just promote the playlists through my own channels. I get all the artists on board promoting it to their fans, asking them to like, listen and share because it benefits everyone. So when submitting music to a podcast or blog, search Spotify to see if that platform also creates playlists. These are very worthwhile opportunities to pursue because they offer a double dose of exposure. Find out more about Brie at brienoble.com. Let's get social. If you haven't already, sign up for the following social media accounts. If you are against social media, it's time to suck it up and accept that for many people in this industry, it is the fastest way to make initial contact, forge a friendship, find your fans, and continue the relationship when they stop streaming. Here are five platforms, at the very least, you should claim a username on. Facebook. Twitter. LinkedIn, Instagram, TikTok. Use the same username for all services. This is important for consistency and helping people find you. If you are found at jsmithtunes on Instagram, then your Twitter handle should be at jsmithtunes. Make it easy for your fans from your other platforms to tweet, mention, or follow you. To keep it consistent, do a quick check on all social media sites before locking in your username. For example, go to facebook.com slash jsmithtunes, instagram.com slash jsmithtunes, etc. to see if the username is available. You can do this from a web browser much more quickly than by searching in the apps. Here's a site you can use to check out all of the socials at the same time. Check usernames.com. If any new social media apps or sites launch after this book is released, please also sign up for those. Even if it is just to claim your unique username, if a new social media platform takes off, you want to have your handle locked in, just in case. Of course, I'm not going to tell you to sign up and then, quote, get to work, end quote. Below are tips on creating a good social media profile and where and how to find your first contacts. Once you've found them, don't do anything yet. Write them down on that piece of paper I had you grab earlier. Golden rules when creating profiles on social media. Give professional information and use a name you are serious about. Your real name or artist name should be what you lead with on your public pages. 
Use a real photo of your face. Show that you are a real person. Don't post crowd shots or a picture of the back of your head staring into the sunset. Don't use fake credentials. Don't undersell yourself either. If you have been producing music for two weeks, don't include that in your bio. You can try something else, like music producer from Australia. If people want to know more, they will ask you. It's important to let your audience know which platforms you are most active on. That way, if they use multiple social media platforms, they know which one they are going to see the most content from you on. As an author and executive, I post most frequently on LinkedIn. That's the platform where I spend most of my time, and that's the one I promote first. Artists may find themselves more frequently on Instagram, Twitch, or Twitter. Put some thought into what kinds of posts you put on each platform. For example, behind the scenes, studio photos work best on Instagram. Quick, spontaneous thoughts work great for Twitter. And achievements and professional developments are most appropriate for LinkedIn. Make a plan and grind it out. Contributed by Troy Carter Jr. My advice to all artists across the globe would be to set an intention. Set intent for your career, outline the direction you want to go in, and get everybody on your team on the same page. Walk, run, or fly in that direction, but have a direction. The game is more competitive than it's ever been. Ultimately, you have to be intentional with everything that you're doing. This includes the music that you are releasing, the time you release it, when your music videos are coming out, what you're posting on social media. There's an underlying myth that you just kind of, quote, make it, end quote, which is never the case. Anybody you see that is very successful today got there through a very deliberate plan of action. Even though releases may seem spontaneous, they aren't. They are extremely calculated and artists at every level have to adapt to the climate of the industry we're in. My advice is to set some intent, write a plan, and then grind it out. Good luck to everybody reading. I'm doing the same thing. Find out more about Troy at diamondent.org. Record labels versus distributors. Contributed by Jay Gilbert. People often refer to major labels when they mean major music groups and or major distributors. Distributor examples include InGrooves, The Orchid, Symphonic, or DistroKid. Label examples include Atlantic, Sub Pop, New West, and None Such. The terms label and distributor are frequently used interchangeably. The truth is, they are completely different animals with very little overlap of roles and responsibilities. Let's look at the differences. Generally speaking, distributors typically handle global digital distribution and monetization, physical and digital product release coordination, best practices and troubleshooting across DSPs and social platforms, surface insights and analytics on release performance, pitching to DSPs for playlists and marketing platforms, content ID and channel optimization on YouTube, social media verifications, rights management, pitching for syncs, potentially, pseudo videos, a cover image with audio bed. Generally speaking, labels typically handle release strategy and marketing plan, radio, photography, sync licensing, placing advertising, full digital marketing strategy, online assets, music videos, and lyric videos, events except in-store events. Find out more about Jay at label-logic.net. Artist profiles and DSP tools. Even if you only have one song released, this is crucial it's essential to have a profile with as much information as possible. If your song gets in front of the editorial team at a major streaming service, your artist profile is the first thing they will see. If you have a photo, brief biography, and an artist playlist, you'll be well ahead of other artists who don't. 
In the first edition of this book, I shared direct links to artist portals on each DSP and urged you to sign up. Since then, the amount of tools that are provided for artists have gone far beyond simply the ability to upload a profile photo and a bio. A lot of DSPs are also providing a suite of marketing tools that can be used. The best part is that these tools are provided absolutely free. As such, something that was once just a single chapter is now going to be a significant portion of this book. I highly suggest creating a quick checklist as we go to make sure that you have claimed your artist profile on each platform and you are aware of the tools and features that they offer. Please be aware that not every streaming platform and tool will be covered in this book. These are the platforms I have had experience using and feel comfortable sharing. It's also worth noting that since the previous edition, Google Play has now been shut down and replaced by YouTube Music. Spotify. Spotify for Artists. Requesting access to Spotify for Artists was quite a challenge initially. Artists would need a minimum of 250 followers on Spotify and would have to answer a series of questions, then wait four plus weeks hoping for a response. Fortunately, this process has become much quicker and various music distributors offer a way to get access almost instantly. Let's go through the steps here. Visit artists.spotify.com and click Get Access. On the next screen, continue. Type in the artist name or paste the artist's Spotify link in the search box. Click on the artist name from the search results. On the next screen, you will see one of two options. Option number one. If your distributor has a connection with Spotify, they will have a way for you to fast track the verification process. This can save you lots of waiting time and sometimes give instant access. If presented with this option, take it. Option two, log in with your Spotify account, free or premium, and continue with the manual verification process. After following the above steps, you will either receive instant verification or an email detailing when you can expect to receive access. Spotify Artist Profile Profile and Banner Photo Profile and banner photos capture people's attention when they view your profile. It shows that you have taken the time to update your profile and make this into a home for your fans. Avoid text and logos in your photo. Keep in mind parts of the photos will be cropped so there may be some trial and error with uploading different images to find your perfect fit. We had to upload a few different images before finding the right one for our artist profile for date night. About. In this section, you can add multiple photos, a bio, and social media links. Image gallery. Uploading photos to the image gallery is extremely important. By uploading, you are giving Spotify permission to use these images in various marketing communications, such as release radar, new release announcements, and upcoming shows in your city, which are sent out through email. Spotify can also use an image if you have uploaded at least one in your profile. It can lead to some awesome free marketing, so upload these photos. As an example, we have seen our images used in email blasts from Spotify announcing upcoming concerts and shows as well as emails sharing new releases for that week. Bio. A biography tells your story and helps new fans to learn a little more about you and your music. While editing your bio, you can type at and link to any other artist, playlist, song or album on Spotify. Can't find the right artist in the search results? You can type at and paste the Spotify URI or URL directly after to make sure you link to the correct source. Artists Pick. The Artists Pick feature allows you to showcase a song, album, podcast, playlist, fundraiser, or concert at the top of your artist profile. This is a great way to promote a new single or playlist. Each pick expires after 14 days, so make a note in your calendar to update these every two weeks. 
bonus tip. It's rumoured Spotify see what artists have set as their artist pick. Perhaps feature an editorial playlist you've got your eye on to get their attention or as a way to publicly say thank you to a curator. More info. This is where you can link fans to your social media where they can also follow you and learn more about you. As a listener, when I find a new artist I like on Spotify, I often follow them. Then I click through to their social media and I follow them there as well. This is another way to capture new fans and continue to engage with them on other platforms. Current platforms include Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and Wikipedia. Spotify promo cards. This allows you to create a quick custom graphic to share on social media. You can share a milestone, for example, 25,000 followers, or a new song, even a podcast episode. You can change the color and size to square, portrait, or landscape. You will also receive a link that you can share. While there is no current indication these links are tracked, it's safe to assume you may be able to see how many people click your customized links in future. This tool is available at promocards.byspotify.com. You can now create milestone cards for reaching 1,000, 5,000, 10,000, all the way up to 10 million followers on Spotify. You can also create these for chart milestones, new releases, live shows, and dozens of eligible editorial playlist ads. Spotify Canvas. Spotify has a cool feature called Canvas. These are eight second vertical video loops or visuals that show when a song is playing. You can see these in the now playing view in the Spotify mobile app. As of February 2021, all artists can now create a canvas for songs through the Spotify for Artists app on the web or on their phone. Spotify even has a canvas designer category on their Sound Better platform, which helps artists find a designer to create a canvas for them. You can create yours at canvas.spotify.com. Spotify and Songkick. Spotify has an integration with Songkick, which allows artists to list their shows and live streams via the On Tour tab on their Spotify profile. Concerts and live streams can be added to Songkick using the Songkick toolbox, which can be found at tourbox.songkick.com slash artists. Live streams are not instantly added and need to be approved by the Songkick team before they will appear. This can take a few days, so make sure to list these as early as possible. Songkick can be connected by logging into Spotify for Artists and going to Profile, then Concerts. Once concerts are displaying correctly on an artist profile, they can also be highlighted as the artist pick at the top of the artist profile. Spotify Lyric Search Did you know that you can search for a song in Spotify by entering some of its lyrics? Let's say a fan heard a song on the radio or in a TikTok post. If they didn't catch the name, they can type in some of the lyrics they remember. For example, if I heard a song with the words Little Blue Balloon, I could enter it into the search and get results for that for any song that includes those lyrics. Spotify Lyrics Search is powered by Music's Match. If you don't have an artist profile on Music's Match, you'll need to upload and deliver the lyrics to Spotify and have them indexed and searchable on Spotify. This is extremely valuable for discovery as it presents another way that fans can find your music. Lyric Search is different from synchronized lyrics, which scroll to show lyrics in time with the music similar to karaoke. Spotify Artist Playlists Spotify allows you to feature any playlist on an artist page under the Artist Playlists section. While there is no way to curate a playlist using your public artist profile, you can curate a playlist from your regular Spotify account as a user, make it public, and feature that on an artist profile. Some artists use this section to highlight playlists their music has been supported on 
and playlists they would like to see their music featured on in the future. Here's how to add artist playlists using your computer. First, log into Spotify for Artists on your desktop. Go to Profile and scroll down to Artist Playlists and click the plus button. From here, type the name of the playlist or paste the Spotify link into the search box. Click on the playlist name to add it. Repeat this step to add multiple playlists. You can also rearrange the order by clicking and dragging and then click Save. The process is similar on your phone. Log into the Spotify for Artists app on your phone, tap the profile icon, and scroll down to Artist Playlists and tap on Edit. Tap Add Playlist, type the name of the playlist into the search box, tap on the playlist to add it. You can press and drag to rearrange the order, click Save once you're done, now the next time you go to the artist profile in the Spotify app and scroll down, you will see these playlists under the artist playlists section. Spotify editorial playlist pitching. Spotify submission forms were floating around the web for a few years. For the fortunate few artists that located these mysterious Google forms, the links were closely guarded and rarely shared. With major labels and distributors able to pitch priority releases to Spotify and their editorial team through other means, many independent artists express their feelings of being left out in the cold. Now, all users of Spotify for Artists have the opportunity to submit a song to the relevant editorial team. If you have an upcoming release that has been uploaded by a distributor but is not out yet, you will see an option at the top of your Spotify Artists dashboard allowing you to submit a song. If your upcoming release is an album, you will only be able to submit one song from the album. Click Pitch From Next Release to get started. You can also find eligible songs by navigating to the Music tab and then clicking Upcoming. From here, you can click Pitch A Song. Once you submit a song, Spotify will ask you to add details relating to the genre and subgenre, you can also share mood, moment, and even the location associated with your release. In the submission form, it's important to add as much detail as possible. This information is attached to your song and will help it to be delivered to the right audience. For instance, if you create beautiful instrumental piano music, you want to make sure it reaches the classical editorial team. Correct information means your song will be delivered to various listeners through editorial and algorithmic playlists and artist radio stations in Spotify. In the next screen, you can add a city. While this can be your hometown, it's best to choose a city where your music has the strongest cultural connection, even if it's not your hometown or current city. You can also describe your song for Spotify using 500 characters or less. This is where you tell a compelling and short story about the song. If you don't have a marketing budget, there's no need to mention it. If you can't craft a good short story about your song, play it to someone who has not heard it before and ask them to describe it in a few sentences. Bonus tip, Spotify has also released a large number of additional genres to choose from when submitting music. Previously, artists with a niche genre found it tough to find an exact match when submitting. While there is currently a mind-blowing 5,521 genre-shaped distinctions on Spotify at the time of writing, not all will be available on the submission form. You can find most of these genres at everynoise.com. I have included an example from a successful pitch below. In this case, I am terrible with words, so I asked the featured singer-songwriter to write something compelling. This is what they wrote. Love, just like the phone on which it's often sparked, seems to fall prey to planned obsolescence. Long after the club lights cool, after all the sweaty clothes come off, after a dozen broken hearts and a hundred bad decisions, you wouldn't fault a person these days for their suspicion of commitment. Then again, that might also be the moment someone's finally ready. It's safe to say that that pitch was well received as the song ended up on two massive editorial playlists on Spotify, Pop Chill Out and Weekend Hangouts.
Spotify release radar reach. One very important piece of information that is often overlooked is that your song will be added into release radar for all of your followers if you submit at least seven business days before release day. Here's what's great about this. If you have 5,000 followers, that equals 5,000 release radar playlists that your song will be added to that week. If you've submitted for playlist consideration at least seven days in advance, your track will automatically be shared to your followers on their release radar playlist on release day. Songs that are submitted fewer than seven days in advance are not guaranteed placement on release radar. It's also worth noting that if you do a separate release for a remix of your song, it is not guaranteed release radar placement. Only original songs uploaded for the first time are guaranteed. Spotify Marquee Campaigns Spotify Marquee allows artists to create a full-screen sponsored recommendation for new releases. The Marquee will display in the app with a prompt to listen to the new album release. A Marquee can be scheduled up to 18 days after a song has been released. At time of writing, Marquee is not available in all countries and there are some minimum requirements that have to be met to be eligible. Artists must have more than 15,000 streams over the last 28 days in the United States. Marquee can only be created for new releases. If promoting an album, 50% or more of the songs must be new and never previously released. The artist's distributor must have enabled Marquee. To see if a Marquee can be created, log in to Spotify for Artists. Campaigns will be visible along the top menu. Please note that Marquee is a paid option for artists that want to promote their music directly within the Spotify app. Spotify for Artists Stats Spotify for Artists has a great amount of detail for where the streams and listeners from your music come from. You can see the location of those listeners, which playlists the streams come from, and if people are listening directly from your artist profile. While it can be addictive to open the app and check your stats several times a day, Keep in mind that these numbers only update once every 24 hours. The only exception here is in the Spotify for Artists app. Immediately after a new song is released, the live stream count shows for the first seven days and updates every two seconds to show the total number of streams. Bonus tip, some artists have found a way to incorporate this count into a live stream on social media. It's a fun way to get your audience excited by sharing updates with them. Spotify Fan Engagement, contributed by Mark Tavern. Improving your marketing means understanding each DSP's ecosystem and implementing strategies and tactics designed for how the platform works. With Spotify, this means better understanding its AI, specifically its algorithmic playlisting and recommendations, and tailoring your marketing to put the platform to work for you. Marketers often talk about push and pull. These are general terms that describe how marketing messages are sent and received. When a brand uses push marketing, they put their message directly in front of consumers through advertising or other promotions. Push marketing is active. Conversely, pull marketing is passive, with marketers trying to draw customers to them organically. As an artist, understanding and implementing both strategies is key. While there are humans making decisions about Spotify's platform, the AI is paying attention to everything happening on it as well. Knowing this means being able to take advantage of Spotify in ways that help both push and pull tactics. Doing so allows you to implement an integrated plan. Push marketing drives followers to your music and engages Spotify's algorithmic playlisting. This in turn generates pull marketing on your behalf via Spotify's recommendations. Lots of effort goes into trying to get onto third-party and editorial playlists, and both are important for generating attention. However, creating your own inbound traffic is important too. This is the push part of your strategy. Run campaigns that share links customized for individual services from each of your social platforms. 
This increases the focus on your music. If you can get enough fans to click through, there will be a spike in traffic when multiple users listen simultaneously. Driving this off-platform traffic to Spotify will be detected, and if you make the spike big enough, the chance your music gets added to an algorithmic playlist increases. This highlights the importance of release day messaging. Release day is the best moment to focus attention on your music. Sharing a link is one way, and the right call to action will get followers to click through and listen. There are other methods too, including making your own playlist that includes a focus track and then sharing the playlist link, running a pre-save campaign, using Spotify's artist pick, and encouraging influencers to point their followers to your music. Be creative here. These methods all demonstrate push marketing, putting links to your music directly in front of your fans. These are effective tactics, not just on their own, but in how they can get Spotify actively working for you through algorithmic playlisting. Driving traffic that triggers Spotify's algorithmic playlists should be half of your plan. The other half is making its recommendation engine work for you. One of the things I tell both clients and students about marketing is that they need to identify their audience. Targeting makes for more efficient marketing, as identifying the people who are interested makes it easier and cheaper to reach them. Spotify does this automatically. Each user has a Discover Weekly playlist tailored to their individual listening habits. There are recommendations on user homepages and via the Fans Also Like section on artist pages. Introducing new music to users is an important feature. It draws users to the platform and keeps them engaged. Use this information as part of your own audience targeting. If Spotify identifies your music as similar to another artist, then there is a good chance that artist's listeners will be interested in your music as well. Once you can generate the kind of traffic that Spotify notices, your music will begin to appear in algorithmic playlists generated for users who have listened to similar artists. This is Spotify's recommendation AI working and where your pool marketing comes in. Be ready for these potential fans. Their initial point of contact is through your profile, so make sure it is optimized. Take an inventory. Are the photos and bio on Spotify up to date and on brand? Are you utilizing social badges so followers who hear your music on Spotify for the first time can click through and follow you off platform? Are you utilizing the artist pick as a way to get mailing list signups or direct potential fans to other sites you control? Are you displaying tour dates and selling merch? If your push marketing is working, ensure your pull marketing is too. Provide as many ways for new listeners to engage with you on platform as possible, and then ensure they are drawn to your own sites. Remember, pull marketing isn't forced. Create the conditions by which your target audience can act and find you. Having a fully optimized, up-to-date profile accomplishes this. It's easy to think of DSPs as a goal, that your marketing ends with them. In actuality, DSPs are also a means to your marketing, enabling you to utilize their individual features as part of your efforts. By fully understanding how a platform works, you can take better advantage of it, turning it into an opportunity. Spotify's AI can be a part of this, a place not just to send existing fans to listen, but one where you can target new fans and get them listening as well. Done right, these can be intertwined, creating an endless feedback in which Spotify's AI becomes a key element in your own marketing. Find out more about Mark at marktavern.com. Spotify Collaborative Playlists In the Spotify app on your phone, you can create a collaborative playlist and add users as collaborators. This is safer than sharing a link as anyone who has the link will be able to access and add and remove songs on your playlist. To set these up on your phone or tablet, tap on your library, go to playlists and select the one you want to collaborate on. Keep in mind you can only do this for a playlist you've already created. Tap the add user button in the header to make the playlist collaborative. 
Start inviting others to add songs and podcast episodes on social media, messaging apps, or simply by copying and pasting the link. Spotify deleted playlists recovery. If you have deleted a playlist in Spotify, you have 90 days to retrieve it. Here's how. Log in to spotify.com slash account. Click recover playlists in the menu on the left. Click restore. Open Spotify and you will find the restored playlist at the bottom of your playlist collection. Bonus tip. So far, recovering a recently deleted playlist may also recover all followers of that playlist. This is extremely valuable for accidental deletions and saves you from starting all the way back at zero. Spotify fans also like Setchin. If you visit an artist's profile on Spotify and look at the fans also like tab, you may be wondering how these related artists are being generated. According to Spotify, the fans also like tab on your artist profile is determined by algorithms using a combination of your fans' listening habits, music discussions, and trends happening around the internet. If you've recently had your music added to Spotify, or perhaps you had to request a separation of your music from an artist with the same name, there is a good chance your fans also like artists could be way off. For instance, I worked with a house music producer who shares a name with a children's singer. For obvious reasons, he swiftly wanted to correct his related artists. To correct the related artists, Thomas Garcia signed up for an account with Last.fm. The next step was logging into Last.fm, going to Settings, then Applications, and opting to connect for Spotify Scrobbling and Spotify Playback. Last.fm will keep track of your listening history within Spotify and will automatically start to piece together other users' listening history. My suggestion is to create a new playlist, say 20 or 30 songs long, including music from both the artist and similar artists you'd like to be related with. Next, share this with friends or fans and ask them to play it through once or twice. Remember, only once or twice, no cheating the system unless you want to see your music removed from Spotify. Just make sure your listeners log into their last.fm account and connect to Spotify first. If all goes well, as it did in my experiment, within a few weeks, you may see your related artists start to change and hopefully be more relevant to your music. Spotify's personalized playlists, contributed by Chris Robley. Don't ignore the power of personalized playlists. It's easy to get distracted by the big official editorial lists that have thousands or millions of followers. It's even easier to get discouraged if you don't end up on one of them. Spotify's system is constantly working in the background to deliver your music to the right listeners, one listener at a time. That might not feel like a big win or a huge headline, but it does help you make a connection. It helps you make fans one person at a time. For my last single, something like 60% of my overall streams were driven by algorithmic activity. For the first 28 days, when Release Radar was delivering the bulk of that interaction, I was getting great engagements too. Not quantity, but quality. Do I wish I had a huge quantity of streams? Of course, but it's rare to get the former without the latter, and at least the people who did hear the song were enjoying it. At the end of the day, thanks to Spotify's recommendation engine, that's a kind of success. Find out more about Chris at chrisrobley.com. Spotify Playlist Cleanup Take a look at your playlists. There's a good chance some of them are in need of a little TLC. Here are some good tools I use to make sure my playlists are always in good order. Removing duplicate songs. Spotify Dedupe, D-E-D-U-P, is a nifty website that removes duplicated songs from your playlists and saves songs. You can find this by doing a quick Google search for Spotify D-E-D-U-P. Removing unavailable tracks. 
Some songs have since been removed from Spotify or are only available in certain countries. To some users, they will appear greyed out and unplayable. Here's how to find and remove them. On the desktop app, go into settings and select show unavailable songs in playlists. Any Spotify user can turn this option on and see songs in the playlist that are not available in their territory or have since been removed from Spotify, but not yet removed from your playlist. It's a good opportunity to clean up your playlist. Spotify genre list. Every noise at once can be found at everynoise.com. It is a deep dive into music genres, songs by city, and so much more. I use this to discover new genres. Emo trap or pirate metal, anyone? Here's the explanation directly from their website. Every Noise at Once is an ongoing attempt at an algorithmically generated, readability-adjusted scatter plot of the musical genre space based on data tracked and analysed for 5,521 genres by Spotify. Yep, you heard that correctly. 5,521 genres at time of writing. Every Noise was created by Glenn McDonald. Glenn is Spotify's genre taxonomist and shares some mind-blowing data through this website and at Every Noise on Twitter. Spotify Search Shortcuts. Spotify Search is commonly used for finding songs, artists, lyrics, and playlists, but there is so much more you can do. These search keywords are particularly useful when finding music from a specific record label, genre, release, or within a specific year or range of years. All of the keywords mentioned are to be entered into the Spotify search bar, and you would type in the text with no spaces between them. To search by a record label name, you would type label, colon, record label name. If the record label is multiple words, for example, Tommy Boy, you would add a plus between each word. Your search string would then be label, colon, Tommy plus Boy, once again with no spaces between them. The same can be applied to search by genre. You can type genre, colon, the genre's name. And the same can also be achieved searching by year. You would type year, colon, the year number. If you would like to search in a year range, you would type year, colon, the first year, hyphen, the second year. For example, year, colon, 2012, hyphen, 2018. You can use this to create a best of 1990s playlist or even a playlist dedicated to your favourite record label and or genre. By using these keywords, you will be able to discover or rediscover many songs for your playlists. In the search results, you can then sort by artist name or song title. This will help with the sorting process as you will see multiple releases featuring the same song. You don't want to add multiple versions of your song into your playlist. Bonus tip. It's much easier to click and drag these into your playlist as you discover them. Alternatively, you can right-click on the song and then choose the playlist you would like to add it to. Spotify listener apps. There's lots of quirky, fun, and useful apps that have been created for Spotify listeners. Here's a few worth checking out. Stations by Spotify. Stations.spotify.com an endless radio stream powered by Spotify. Spotify for pets. Pets.byspotify.com Get your pet playlist, music for our best friends. Soundtrack your workout. Soundtrackyourworkout.byspotify.com Uses your listening habits and inputs to create the perfect mix for your workout. Soundtrack Your Ride, soundtrackyourride.byspotify.com allows you to sync up, customize, and get the perfect playlist for your ride. 
Spotify Duo, the ultimate love experience. Duo love songs dot by Spotify dot com. Create a personalized love playlist for your relationship. Spotify Kids. Explore the kids app dot by Spotify dot com. Sample songs from the kids app via your favorite emojis. Rap Caviar Day One Club. Day One Club dot by Spotify dot com. Prove which rappers you've been listening to the longest on Spotify. Spotify High Intensity Interval Training. Pumped dot by Spotify dot com. Create a personalized high intensity interval training workout and exercise with the music you love. Spotify Fan Study. Fan Study dot by Spotify dot com. A super detailed study into fan behavior and how it translates into Spotify. The first study showed how many fans come to Spotify from links shared on LinkedIn, Discord, and other platforms. Music's Match. Music's Match is not a music streaming platform per se, but they do deliver lyrics to multiple platforms. They even translate lyrics into other languages and can synchronize them in time with the music. I've mentioned them previously, so if you haven't signed up, now is the time. Anyone can contribute lyrics, which are then verified and made available in a number of apps. These include Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon Music, Shazam, Instagram, and even Google search results. Artists can also get verified accounts by signing up at musicsmatch.com. Deezer. Deezer Backstage. Deezer is available in over 180 countries and is one of the first major DSPs in many of these countries. This means that in many of these countries, such as France, there are more Deezer subscribers than Spotify or Apple. Deezer Backstage launched mid-2020 and is available to artists, managers and labels at backstage.deezer.com. If your request doesn't get a response after a few weeks, you can politely escalate with at Deezer help on Twitter. I waited three weeks before tweeting and asked them to review my request. Please note that they will ask for the artist name, who requested access, and the email address entered on the form. I did this and within two days I had access for multiple artists. Deezer Artist Profile Highlight Deezer allows you to highlight a track, album, or playlist on your artist page. This is similar to the artist pick option in Spotify. Go to the artist edition page in Deezer Backstage. Under the highlights section, use the search function to find the content, track, album, or playlist that you want to highlight. Select the country where you want the highlighted content to be visible. To display it to your entire fan base, select worldwide. Choose how long you want the content to be highlighted on your page. Deezer Artist Playlists. You can feature up to two playlists on your Deezer Artist profile. To do this, you will first need to create two playlists as a user in Deezer. In other words, logged into the app as a listener. You can update these playlists with new music anytime. Once you have created your playlists, follow these steps. Email support at Deezer.com with the subject Artist Profile Update, Artist Name. Include two links to playlists that you have created. These will be added to your artist profile as artist playlists. Deezer also requires the URL of your artist profile and your Deezer username in the email. Deezer Web Widget. Deezer's embeddable web widget is available worldwide. Even if Deezer isn't available in your country, you can still create a widget. You can embed an album, playlist, track, artist, podcast, or podcast episode. The widget can be included on artist websites, in articles, blogs, and posts. You can create a widget at widget.deezer.com, or if you use Deezer on the web, 
click the Share menu. Bonus tip. Create a dedicated landing page for each streaming platform on your website. This will allow you to include direct links to your music and playlists on that specific DSP. Amazon Music. Amazon Music for Artists. Amazon Music is fast becoming a major player in the music streaming world. Artists can get access to their profiles, some helpful tools for selling merch, and even integrations with Twitch. Amazon Music for Artists launched in 2020 and is available on the web at artists.amazon.com and as a mobile app for iOS and Android devices. You will need an Amazon account to be able to sign in and claim your profile. Creating an Amazon account is free and can be used to log into multiple Amazon products, including Twitch. Once logged in, you can request access on the main screen. You'll be greeted with a form where you should add as much information as you can to prove that you are the artist or should have access to that artist, e.g. you are a manager, label, or distributor for that artist. To get expedited access, you can log in with your distributor credentials. If you distribute your music to Amazon Music using CD Baby, DistroKid, or TuneCore, this is the quickest known way to get access and skip any waiting periods while someone at Amazon verifies your request. Amazon Music Artist Profile. You can upload a profile photo and cover photo in Amazon Music for Artists. This can be done by going to the Profile and Tools screen at artists.amazon.com or clicking on the person icon in the app on your phone. These images will need to meet certain guidelines, which you can see in the app, to make sure that your images will be accepted. There is currently no known way to add a biography to an artist profile on Amazon Music. Amazon Music and Twitch linking. You can link your Twitch account to your Amazon Music artist profile. This allows users of Amazon Music to view your Twitch live streams directly in the Twitch or Amazon Music app on your artist profile. It also notifies all of your followers when you go live. To set this up, log into the Amazon Music for Artists app and click on the profile icon located in the bottom right corner in the mobile app or click Profile and Tools on the Amazon Music for Artists website. From here, you can connect your Twitch channel. Artists can also work their way up to become Twitch affiliates, which allows fans to subscribe to their channel and send tips, also known as bits. Twitch Prime users also get a monthly subscription included, and they can use that to subscribe to any Twitch channel and support the artist directly. Amazon Music Merch. Artists can now create their own merchandise page on Amazon and link it to their Amazon Music Artist page. Check out these examples from Taylor Swift, Mary J. Blige, and ACDC. Amazon.com slash ACDC. Amazon.com slash Mary J. Blige. Amazon.com slash Taylor Swift. The latest information, request forms, and integrations can be found at artists.amazonmusic.com slash merch. Amazon Music Editorial Playlist Pitching Amazon Music allows artists to pitch an upcoming release directly within the Amazon Music for Artists app. This also allows you to submit a song that was released within the last two weeks. Take the time to add as much detail as possible when filling out the submission forms, because you are giving your music opportunities beyond just editorial playlist ads. The team at Amazon hinted that this could also lead to radio programming and other features within Amazon Music. Don't have a subscription to Amazon Music? You can go to music.amazon.com in most web browsers without the need to sign in. You can search the music library and copy share links to tracks, albums, artists, podcasts, and music videos. Amazon Music Social Media Tags Tag the relevant Amazon accounts in each post on social media. Amazon Music is one of the newer DSPs, so they tend to be more responsive on social media. Tag these accounts in your posts and they may respond. On Facebook, tag... Amazon Music. On Twitter, 
tag Amazon Music. There is also different variations of this for other countries, including the UK, Japan, Mexico, and Indonesia. On Instagram, tag Amazon Music. They also have individual accounts for other countries as well. Amazon Music has also started creating social media accounts for specific genres. One example, if you create hip-hop or R&B, you could tag the handle at rotation. Amazon Music suggests tagging at Amazon Music instead of using hashtag Amazon Music. This is clearly mentioned in their online documentation. They also say that by tagging them in your posts, it makes it, quote, easy for us to find, engage, and share your posts to our followers, end quote. Amazon Music using Alexa. Have your followers request you directly from their Alexa device? The Amazon Music team pays close attention to the number of requests for an artist through Alexa. Requests can be made to Alexa using artist name, album name, song title, or by singing part of the song lyrics. Artists can also see how many people have requested their music by song, album, artist, or by singing or speaking part of the lyrics. This can be found in Amazon Music for Artists. Bonus tip. Add your song lyrics to Amazon through Lyric Find or Music's Match, as fans may not know your song title but can speak or sing part of the lyrics to Alexa. Get your fans to follow you on their Alexa device to receive notifications when you release new music. Fans can simply say, Alexa, follow artist name on Amazon Music. If you have an artist name that is unique to pronounce, you can teach your fans how to pronounce the name correctly in video posts on social media. You can also speak directly with your label or distributor and inform them of the correct pronunciation of your artist name and they can deliver that information to Amazon for you. Bonus tip. With multiple DSPs supporting voice, you can also make requests to Alexa to follow other services. For example, Alexa, follow artist name on Spotify. As long as you have linked that DSP on your Alexa-enabled device, you can make this request. Angami. Angami for artists. Angami launched in 2012 as the first legal streaming platform and digital distribution company in the Middle East. Angami allows the uploading of songs, albums, podcasts, and music videos directly to its platform, bypassing a distributor. It's worth mentioning that Angami is available in a number of countries worldwide, but does not currently have agreements for all content to be available in all countries. In other words, most music is available on Angami for listeners in the Middle East, but may not show on Angami in the United States. One way to see if your music is on Angami is to open an incognito web browser window and search for artist name, song title, Angami. Your song may show up in the search results and you can grab the URL for the artist, song, or album. Angami Artist Profile. Once you have access and are signed into your dashboard account, click on My Artist Profile. On this page, you can do the following. Upload an artist profile image or choose to use the picture from the artist profile on Facebook. Update the artist name. Edit the music language. Add a biography. Add links to Facebook and Twitter. Click Update Profile when done. These changes are not instant. Angami staff will review them and send an email with approval or rejection, usually within a few days. Angami Direct Music Uploads. As mentioned, Angami has a rare offering which allows artists to upload music directly. This means you can bypass a distributor. If you previously distributed music to Angami, you can simply uncheck Angami as a store for future releases with your distributor. Your distributor will then continue to handle all other stores while you are responsible for uploading your music to Angami. Uploading your music to Angami 
allows detailed revenue-based data with financial reports, streams by song, and streams by country. The upload form is relatively straightforward. Even better, you can also upload songs, albums, podcasts, DJ mixes, and compilations through this form. You can also upload videos using either a video file from your computer or a YouTube link. These will be connected to an existing song you have previously uploaded and allows fans to opt for watching the music video with accompanying visuals as an alternative to streaming just the audio. Angami Editorial Playlist Pitching The Angami for Artists mobile app now shows an exciting option that is coming soon for direct playlist pitching. While there is no more detail yet, it's a great reason for artists to sign up and claim access now so they can be first in line as soon as this feature becomes available. Keep in mind that when Spotify first launched their editorial submission tool, roughly one in every seven tracks was added to an editorial playlist as a result. It's definitely worth signing up and being one of the first for when this is available. Cobuzz. Cobuzz is geared towards audio files largely due to their integration with high-end audio equipment. Their curation is completely human, and it shows. The playlists are shorter, heavily curated, and they are not afraid to showcase music from less established artists. Artist bios are delivered to Cobuzz from TiVo. Yep, the same company that has pioneered the magic TV recording box. TiVo's database is also shared at allmusic.com for biographical information. To include your bio on Cobuzz, send an email to TiVo at content.music at TiVo.com. Be warned, it can take a few weeks for this data to appear on allmusic.com and then on Cobuzz. Album reviews are written in-house by the Cobuzz team. There is no official process for submitting music for consideration for review at this time. You can change your artist photo by reaching out through the customer service portal on cobuzz.com. Genius. Genius is a community of music lovers and artists sharing their knowledge and stories behind the music. Genius also delivers lyrics and extra information to various streaming services. You can get verified at genius.com. Once verified, you will be able to share accurate lyrics, hidden meanings and stories behind songs and song lyrics, and even reach out to fans on there that are already annotating your music on the website. Napster. Napster only allows you to upload one image at this time. To do this, fill out the form located in the Napster Help Center on their website. Be sure to include the URL to your artist page so they know where to add this image. The dimensions for the image must be 1500 by 1000 and it must be a JPEG file. The live chat on Napster's website is also quite helpful. Tidal. Tidal doesn't currently provide any artist tools or apps. That being said, social media links, bios and photos can be added to an artist's profile by sending an email. In fact, by going to an artist's profile such as Jay-Z, you can see an example of how much additional information can be added. There are links to his social media, an updated bio, and photos. Send an email to artistsupport at title.com with two photos, links to your social media, a short biography, and the URL to your artist profile on Tidal. Tidal is similar to other DSPs in that you can view an artist page without having an account or being logged in. Apple Music. Apple Music launched in 2015 and is available in over 100 countries worldwide. If you don't have an Apple device or Apple ID, you can still see what is offered on Apple Music by going to music.apple.com on your computer. Prior to 2020, users could do this by navigating to beta.music.apple.com, which is still functioning as well, if you're curious. You can even browse through the music selection on Apple Music without signing in. This allows you to make sure your music is available and see what your artist profile looks like without having to pay for a subscription. 
You can also see if your song has been featured on a playlist, chart, or on one of the homepage screens. Of course, you still need a subscription to fully stream any music. You can easily change the country to see the homepage in various countries as programming varies by country. This is available at the bottom of the screen. Apple Music for Artists Artists, labels and managers can sign up to Apple Music for Artists at artists.apple.com and request access to one or more artists. Alternatively, access can also be requested in the Apple Music for Artists app, currently available only on Apple iOS devices. Requests can be fast-tracked for independent artists through their distributor. Currently, the following distributors have a way to expedite access to Apple Music for Artists. CD Baby, DistroKid, 1RPM, TuneCore, and United Masters. Apple Music also includes Shazam Insights. Fun fact, anytime someone with an Apple device says, Hey Siri, what song is this? The answer is delivered from Shazam and counts as a Shazam, even if you don't have the Shazam app installed. Apple Music Artist Data Once you have access, let's walk through the features in Apple Music for Artists. Overview The Overview panel is a quick summary of plays, average daily listeners, iTunes song purchases, and Shazams. You can choose to see stats going as far back as the lifetime of the artist on the platform or as recent as the past week. Insights. The Insights section provides a quick glance at specific milestones, letting you know where your music is taking off around the world. This tells you about editorial playlist ads, Shazam milestones, and stream milestones. Trends. The Trends section allows you to customise a graph to give a visual representation of the numbers for your artist. You can use the drop-down menus to filter your stream counts by individual songs, playlists, locations, ages, genders, and more. Places. The data in this section allows you to dive deeper into how many plays, listeners, and shazams your music is getting in specific countries or regions. This can be extremely valuable for routing a tour or targeting social media ads towards fans in a specific city. Your Music The Your Music tab shows a summary of plays, average daily listeners, Shazams and iTunes purchases. If you have been added to a playlist, you can also see the number of songs added to that playlist and the number of plays received through that playlist. Downloading Your Data Apple Music for Artists allows you to download some of this data in CSV, also known as Comma Separated Values Format. This allows you to open the file in your preferred spreadsheet program, could be Microsoft Excel, Apple Numbers, or Google Sheets. To download data, click on the text See All. On the next screen, click on the square icon with the down arrow. This will automatically launch the download of the CSV file for you. Updating your artist profile picture. You can change your artist profile picture by clicking the Manage tab, then clicking Upload Image. Apple is very particular about artist images. The artist's face must be visible and you can't upload text or a logo in the artwork. Apple Music Marketing Tools. If you are looking for unique ways to share music, such as a scannable QR code or embeddable music player, check out this suite of marketing tools from Apple Music. If you happen to also be an affiliate with Apple, you can also include your affiliate code when sharing links to Apple Music as well and make a little extra money from sharing music. Pretty cool, right? The following tools we're about to cover can all be found by searching for Apple Music marketing tools. Apple Music QR Codes QR codes are an interactive and effective way to drive more people to a specific website, product, or in this case, music. Print these on clothing, bumper stickers, or even project them onto screens. Try this out. Apple Music Twitter Audio Card 
Twitter audio cards are a 30-second preview of a song that can be shared within a tweet. They use the album cover and allow anyone to listen to a 30-second clip of the song without leaving Twitter. Apple Music subscribers can also click the link to hear the song in full. Another nice bonus here is that Apple affiliates can include an affiliate code when generating these previews and can make some money from any subscriptions that occur as a result. Apple Music Artist Playlists Creating playlists as an artist on Apple Music takes a few steps, but it's well worth the extra steps to give you an edge over the competition. You will need admin access to the artist in Apple Music for Artists, an Apple Music subscription, and the Apple Music app installed on your phone. Currently, this can only be done via the mobile app. Tap the library icon. Tap Edit. Check the option next to Admin. Tap Done. Tap on Admin. Tap the artist name. Then tap New Playlist. While the playlists created will not currently show in search results or on artist profiles, the links can be shared on social media. Your fans can then save your playlists to their own library and the playlist curator name will link listeners directly to your artist profile. A video walkthrough of this can be found at workhardplaylisthard.com. Apple Music Lyrics Add lyrics to your music to allow fans to find your song by search or by speaking part of the lyrics. This is also helpful for potential new fans who may only remember part of the lyrics to one of your songs. Some distributors will offer a way to push lyrics to Apple Music and other streaming platforms. Alternatively, you can send the lyrics directly to the Apple Music team via their contact form on artists.apple.com. There should be an option for submitting your lyrics. Beatport. Beatport Artist and Label Profiles Beatport started as an online music store to purchase extended mixes of music for DJs. In 2019, Beatport Link launched and allowed DJs to stream any song from Beatport to connected DJ equipment. Beatport allows artists to upload a professional headshot to their artist profile. The artwork must be at least 590 by 404 pixels and a JPEG image. You can find this form by doing a quick search for Beatport Artist Image Update. If you are a DJ, in addition to being a producer, you can create your own charts on Beatport at beatport.com slash DJ slash charts slash new. You can then add these charts to your artist profile. If you are a record label owner, you can also have your label profile updated. Your image must be 500 by 500 pixels and you can include a bio as well. The label update form can be found by searching for Beatport label update form. Bonus tip. Most independent music distributors have the ability to distribute music to Beatport but may only do so upon request. This is because not every genre of music is accepted or available on Beatport. If you make some form of electronic music or hip hop, you should definitely reach out to your distributor to see if they can also add your music to Beatport. Beatport Hype. Running your own label? Beatport Hype is an official Beatport promotional platform with a suite of features to get your music in front of more listeners. It is, however, only available to selected label partners. The monthly cost is less than a Netflix subscription and Beatport claims that, on average, Labels signed up to Beatport Hype have seen an increase of more than 70% in track sales. This is owned and operated by Beatport themselves, with 35 million unique visitors per year and 25,000 tracks added every week. It's a great opportunity to invest in some extra promotion to get your music heard. The website is hype.beatport.com. Submitting your music through this platform also allows your music to be eligible for dedicated hype charts, including the Hype Top 10, which features on the Beatport homepage. Pandora. Pandora Artist Marketing Platform. 
Pandora is a music streaming platform with close to 60 million monthly listeners in the United States. Artists from anywhere in the world can get access to some awesome tools to reach and grow their audience on Pandora. Currently, Pandora is only available to listeners in America, but there's nothing stopping artists from all over the world having a presence on the platform. Pandora provides a number of extremely useful tools for artists to promote their music and connect with their fans. These are available through their artist marketing platform, also known as AMP, which is located at amp.pandora.com. Pandora Submission Tool Distributing your music to Pandora is only half of the work. Pandora is a human-curated collection of music. To make your music available on all of Pandora's services, you need to fill out a brief form. Pandora does have an independent artist submission tool that allows your music to be reviewed and considered by Pandora for programming inclusion on their radio stations. To use this, you will first need an AMP account. Independent artists can use a distributor such as CD Baby or DistroKid to get their music on Pandora. Once music has been distributed, artists can submit their music at amp.pandora.com slash submit. You can find a release to submit using its UPC or searching by a song name. If you are submitting an album, choose one favourite track to put forward for consideration. You will then select a genre and write a description of 4,000 characters or less. There is currently no option to tag moods or keywords with the song submission. Once a submission is approved, it will be analysed in the Music Genome Project and made available on all Pandora platforms. Pandora Featured Tracks Pandora allows you to feature up to six tracks per year. Featured tracks will gain an increase in spins across Pandora radio stations in an effort to gain audience feedback. Listeners can vote with a thumbs up or down when they listen to your featured track. As a bonus, you can do this for any track that was released within the last 12 months. The song will need to have at least 10 spins in the last 7 days to be eligible. Bonus tip, those 10 spins can come from the same person. Just between us so of course. The feature selection form is very short and there is no review process. The song will simply be featured on the date range you specify. One clever use I've seen of this feature is selecting a holiday song that came out 11 months ago as the feature to lead up to the holiday season in the current year. This way you can potentially give a song another chance at being heard, especially if it revolves around a specific time of the year, like a holiday. Pandora Stories Pandora Stories are artist-curated playlists and mixtapes, also known as stations. These are comprised of music and comedy tracks from Pandora's library. Anyone can create these, not just artists. You can even record your own voice tracks that can be attached to specific songs or set to play between tracks in sequential order. This is a great opportunity to share some behind the scenes stories, fan messages, or promotional reminders about your music. You can request access to create stories by going to the AMP Playbook, which can be found at ampplaybook.com. Pandora Artist Audio Messages Artist Audio Messages, also known as AAMs, are short 15-second audio notes to your fans. They can be used to promote releases and tour dates, as well as saying thank you at the beginning or end of a song. These messages also show a photo and a CTA, also known as call to action. This can be as simple as tap here to buy tickets in the text or tap the link on your screen to listen now, inserted into the audio. AAMs can run for up to one year once live. You can also set these messages to only play to listeners in specific locations. This is particularly useful if you're promoting a tour where you may only be performing in five cities. You can target listeners in those cities with your message. AmpCast allows you to record and upload messages from your phone within the Pandora app. You will need to log in with the same credentials you use for your Pandora AMP account. Pandora Artist Bios Pandora does not have a way for artists to directly upload their biography at this time. 
Artist Bios are hosted by TiVo. Yep, still the same company I mentioned before when we were talking about Cobuzz. TiVo's database is also shared with allmusic.com. To include your bio on Pandora, you will need to send an email to TiVo at content.music at TiVo.com. It can take a few weeks for this data to appear on allmusic.com and then on Pandora. Pandora Fresh Cuts Station. The team at Pandora curates a station that is focused on breaking artists that engage with their artist marketing platform and their account on social media. This Fresh Cuts station is currently open for submissions by posting a link to your track on Twitter and tagging at Pandora Amp in the post. Be sure to include the link to your track on Pandora and not another streaming platform. You'd be surprised how many times I've seen artists do this. Pandora Lyrics Pandora's lyrical content is hosted by Lyric Find. To add lyrics and have them displayed on Pandora, you'll need to contact Lyric Find through their website or via your distributor. Looking for another reason to add your lyrics? Some people don't know the name of a song, but they can recall and type part of the lyrics. They can speak or sing them to their smart speaker device. Alexa, Google, and Siri can all sync with Pandora. By adding lyrics, you allow people to find your song through keywords. Pandora Track Reporting Pandora provides comprehensive insights into a track's performance, including streams, radio spins, interactive plays, station ads, and thumbs up. All of this artist data can be exported as a CSV, allowing you to import it into the spreadsheet program of your choice. There are dedicated reporting pages for each track with line graphs for daily trends and a source breakdown which shows what programs a track is being streamed on. TikTok. TikTok for artists. TikTok is one of the most addictive social media platforms of our time. Artists have opportunities to grow their audience on here through one of two ways. The first is creating videos using your music. The second is creating your own videos and growing a following on your TikTok profile. Here's what to do when you first download the app. Pick a username consistent with your other platforms, then connect your YouTube and Instagram profiles for cross-platform growth. For example, at AskMikeWarner is my handle on social media, including TikTok. Warm up your account for a few days before you start posting. Use the app like a regular user. Follow profiles and leave thoughtful comments on content you like. This is important to do before posting your first video because it teaches TikTok about your account. Post one high quality and engaging video with your target audience in mind. You can look at some of the first TikTok videos posted by artists similar to you for inspiration. With your first few posts, TikTok's algorithm will be working to understand who you are, what you are about, and who to show your TikTok videos to. Make sure to post consistently, but not too much. As a guide, in the first two weeks, post two videos per week at different times and watch to see which video has more engagement. Pay attention to things like time of day posted, hashtags used, content, quality, and length. You can link to a web version of your public TikTok profile that can be shared anywhere. Simply use this URL format. If your TikTok handle is at AskMikeWarner, your TikTok web link is tiktok.com slash at AskMikeWarner. Most content on the platform can be viewed on the web browser without even being logged in. Bonus tip. If you find TikTok users creating videos with your music, you can save or share these videos to social media. It's free content and a great way to thank the creator. TikTok audio preview start times. Ever find yourself scrolling through TikTok and notice that the catchiest part of the song is always used? This is no coincidence. When music is uploaded through a distributor, there is an option to specify the start time for audio previews. This means that if people preview the song in iTunes or Apple Music, 
it will begin playing exactly at the timestamp you specified in the preview to start. This also applies to TikTok and is super valuable if someone wants to include your song in their video. It's no secret that hit songs like Lizzo, Truth Hurts, have a very strategic preview start time. For those that aren't familiar, the clip starts with, I just took a DNA test, turns out I'm 100%. Many distributors will allow artists to go and update the preview clip start time for music that has already been released. This avoids the need to redistribute music that is already live. Bonus tip. Some artists have seen significant success with a song on TikTok when a clip goes viral. Users start searching for the song it uses. Make sure you have added your lyrics in the services mentioned earlier. Some artists have even renamed a track so the song title matches the most recognisable part of the lyrics. YouTube YouTube Official Artist Channels As an artist, there's a good chance some of your music is already on YouTube in one form or another. You may have uploaded some live footage or your distributor may have added it to one of those artist name topic channels. Now there's a way to merge all of these videos from various channels into one official artist channel. Now, before you say, I looked into this and it was way too hard because I didn't have X, just stop right there. Things have changed. Previously, you needed free music videos to be delivered to YouTube via a distributor before you could claim your official artist channel. But now the requirement is free releases via a distributor. This means even audio releases count. According to artists.youtube.com, all artists can now claim an official artist channel, also known as OAC. YouTube launched OACs in 2018, allowing artists to merge multiple channels into one official channel. If you have songs uploaded by a record label on one channel or songs uploaded by Vivo or your distributor, also known as topic channels, these will now be merged into one official artist channel. Official artist channels can be spotted because there will be a musical note after the artist's name. OACs will have a playlist called Music Videos that features all songs that have been distributed to YouTube. These no longer appear under artist name topic channels and will automatically be added to this playlist on the official artist channel on YouTube. Here's what you need to know about YouTube OACs. Organized content. The channel layout automatically organizes your discography into an album section and your official music videos into new playlists. To ensure a consistent fan experience across YouTube, you can't edit these playlists. However, you can place a separate section above your locked video and album sections to promote anything you like. Discoverability in search. When your fans search for you on YouTube, they'll be linked directly to your OAC from your watch card on the right side of the screen. Promotional content. Choose what you want to highlight in the dedicated promotional shelf and in the featured video slot. Fan engagement. One verified, unified channel where you can directly reach and engage with your fans on YouTube. These above notes were taken from a support article that can be found on YouTube's support page. The latest YouTube artist support article states, quote, if you work with a label, digital distributor, or have a partner manager, get in touch with them to get an official artist channel, end quote. However, no form or link is provided and there is no mention of which digital distributors are able to handle official artist channel requests. So artists that are signed to a record label or have a partner manager for YouTube are set. But what about the independent artists? I did some research and compiled a list of digital distributors that can help. CD Baby. Request access in the tools section. DistroKid. Request access via the settings menu. Once you have claimed your channel, you will receive a confirmation email from YouTube with new ways you can connect with your fans using community posts, mobile live streams, tickets, and comment hearts. 
YouTube Analytics for Artists. Artists on YouTube are finally getting access to more data and insights. YouTube has finally announced their much-awaited analytics product for artists. Bypassing any beta release, quote, new YouTube analytics for artists, end quote, is now live. Yep, the word new is part of the title. It's available for all artists with an OAC. Here's the announcement from studio.youtube.com. Quote, the new analytics for artists is here giving artists the most comprehensive and complete view of their audience, global reach, and performance across YouTube. Visit studio.youtube.com to check it out. Analytics for Artists will be available for all official artist channels and provide access to a unique set of features that will equip artists and their teams with the knowledge they need to make the most informed and strategic release plans. In addition to desktop, Artists can now easily access these new insights on the YouTube Studio mobile app, enabling them to get data and notification updates in real time, whether they are on the road or in the studio. Artists with an official artist channel can view their stats at studio.youtube.com or by downloading the YouTube Studio app. The YouTube Studio app is available on Android and Apple devices. YouTube Artist Image Studio.youtube.com allows artists with an OAC to add a bio, photos, and create artist playlists on their profile. The photos uploaded can be seen on YouTube Search, YouTube Charts, the YouTube Music app, playlists, and banners. YouTube will ask you to upload the same image twice in different dimensions. One of the images will be used in YouTube and the other will be used in the YouTube Music app. To add this, go to studio.youtube.com, click on Profile, enter your name and bio, pick a high-quality photo, and finally, using the pencil icon, add a square profile photo and a rectangular profile photo. YouTube Artist Bio. Again. This is done by logging into studio.youtube.com. Once accepted, your bio can be seen on YouTube search, your channel, and the YouTube Music app. To update your bio, select anywhere in the biography box, enter your bio, and select save bio. Be sure to follow these guidelines to make sure it doesn't get taken down by YouTube. Keep it under 1500 characters. After 150 characters, YouTube Music truncates it and puts the remaining bio behind a more link. Make sure the content meets their community guidelines. Keep your bio up to date. Promoting an upcoming album or new release in your bio may go out of date quickly. YouTube community posts and fan engagement. YouTube OACs also have access to a new feature. In the community tab, artists can create posts with text, images, playlists, videos, and polls. You can even tag other channels in your posts by using at followed by the channel name. These posts can also be scheduled for a later date. In addition to liking and disliking comments on your videos, you can also heart comments. Your fans can also see when you heart their comments. This allows for re-engagement as they receive a notification when you do. YouTube Guide for Artists This guide was contributed by a good friend who wanted to remain anonymous. Best Practice for YouTube Video Optimization Artists have a fundamental misunderstanding of what YouTube's core product is. It's not a video audio hosting service. It's a content recommendation engine. The key to YouTube's growth as a platform and its value to artists is its suggested videos recommendation algorithm. Artists who are already using the platform to discover music and want to make the most of YouTube's recommendation algorithm and tap into its huge global audience of active users should fully optimize their YouTube content along with their channels. This gives the algorithm the correct information it needs to serve their content to new audiences on YouTube. YouTube Algorithm Quickly Explained 
YouTube's recommendation engine serves content using their North Star metric of watch time per impression. This means the longer your video can retain a viewer, impacting watch time, the more likely the YouTube algorithm will be able to recommend your content to new audiences. To YouTube, an engaging 15-minute long content piece has more long-term potential reach than a three-minute long music video, so your long-form video content strategy and YouTube strategy should be one and the same. After release, 80% of a video's views will come within the first 10 days, unless reinserted into the recommendation algorithm. Subscribers and previous viewers are served a new video within the first 48 hours, and YouTube will continue to surface the video within the homepage and browse section for the next 10 days, before more long-term suggestions take over from the three to six week mark onwards, if you've satisfied the algorithm. The first 48 hours to 10 days of a video's lifetime are crucial to its long-term viability on YouTube, so it pays to maximize your impact at launch by ensuring your content is properly optimized for YouTube. Optimizing video metadata improves search results and YouTube recommendations over time so views continue to flow in incrementally after release. YouTube video optimizations. Note, these video optimizations are only for OAC uploads and don't apply to YouTube audio products delivered to YouTube via a distributor. How to optimize your videos. Track title. A YouTube video title is made up of two parts. The information, artist name, content keywords, and the hook, what happens. Emotion driven, tease of content. Video titles are one of the most important YouTube indexes for search. So you must always ensure that you have your critical keywords included when relevant. Official music video for music videos, live for live performances, artist or track for covers, acoustic for acoustic renditions, location if relevant to a content piece, for example, live at Wembley Arena, year if a video is current or old enough to be nostalgic. You will also want to keep a consistent structure with titles and punctuation, for example, artist name, hyphen, track name, Critical keyword. YouTube thumbnails. Thumbnails are the important feature of a YouTube video as it acts as a front window to any potential viewer who may be deciding whether or not to watch your video. This is also the hardest topic for blanket suggested optimizations as all suggestions are very case by case. Your safest bet is choosing an engaging and eye-catching screen grab from within the video. Usually this involves a well-lit close-up of the artist's face with eye contact and conveyed emotion. The thumbnail must be engaging and there must be synergy between the title and the thumbnail. Track meta description structure. A video's meta description is the keyword rich text that YouTube indexes for search results. You want to include as many relevant text and keywords in there as possible without spamming. Here's a good video description template example, taken from a well-optimized artist video on YouTube. The first line of a video's meta description must directly reflect the title of the video, any added copy for context, links to any streaming, social, or sales sites, song lyrics. Song lyrics must go in the video description in case listeners are searching for a song by song lyrics on YouTube without knowing the track name. Artist bio. Keyword rich, artist specific text at the bottom of the meta description. Video keywords. Take advantage of the 500 characters available when adding tags and keep in mind that SEO keywords for musicians are branded and specific you're looking to align your video keywords with specific terms that users are already searching for on Google when they search for you. For example, song name, lyrics. Artist name, live. Artist name, acoustic, etc. This will require some keyword research on your behalf. A general template for YouTube keywords would be as follows. 
band-specific, track-specific, other top-performing tracks from that artist, lyrics, band member names, video-specific, for example, live, acoustic, year of recording. Video end screens. A standardised end screen template across all videos is a must as it creates extended viewing sessions for listeners who finish your videos. Viewers who complete a video are looking for their next content piece to watch, so you want to make sure you provide that to them with an end screen. A good template includes the following elements. A channel subscribe button, link to official music video YouTube playlist, and the best for audience algorithmic suggestion that YouTube pulls from the artist channel. This guide was contributed by a good friend who wanted to remain anonymous. Bandcamp. Streaming services have forever changed the way that fans listen to music, and in the process, as is evidenced by this book, demonstrated a need for artists to rethink how they share, sell, and promote their music. For the most part, streaming services do one thing, stream your music. But imagine a platform where a fan can listen to your music and then with one click, buy that music. Not just as an MP3, it can even be a CD, a vinyl LP, a tape, or heck, even a pin, a patch, or a t-shirt. While technically more of a retail platform, the indie artist's beloved Bandcamp functions in some ways very much like a streaming platform in fact, there is so much more. Bandcamp has a detailed site for artists at bandcamp.com slash artists. GeoSarvan GeoSarvan Artist One GeoSarvan, previously known as Sarvan, was founded in 2007. It is the Indian online music streaming service and a digital distributor of Bollywood, English, and other regional Indian music across the world. At time of writing, GeoSarvan has over 100 million users using the GeoSarvan app and website across the world. GeoSarvan has an artist-facing website called Artist One. Register at artists.geosarvan.com to gain access to data showing where your fans are from. A cool feature unique to GeoSarvan is that it will show you other artists your fans also like and encourage you to collaborate with those artists on a future release to grow your fan base together. Artist One was previously known as GeoSarvan Artist Insights. Bonus tip follow at GeoSarvan for Creators on Instagram for announcements relating to new features, tips for artists, and live masterclasses. GeoSarvan Artist Playlists Once you have access to GeoSarvan Artist 1, you can create artist playlists that will be showcased on your artist profile. These playlists will first need to be created from your user account by logging in at geosarvan.com, after which you can link them and feature them on your artist page. GeoSarvan will use your current artist profile photo and create customised playlist artwork for you. The two playlists available are Artist Hits Playlist. Essentially a catalogue playlist showcasing the artist's original music and a way for fans to also find new releases. Made by Playlist. This is a playlist of music from any artist. It can include music the artist is inspired by or likes to listen to. This is also a great opportunity to include music by similar artists, featuring them in your playlist. They may even do the same for you in their playlists. To update these playlists, you just update the version in your user profile at geosarvan.com and every 24 hours it will update the version on your artist profile. GeoSarvan Artist Profiles GeoSarvan allows verified artists to add a photo, biography and social media links to their artist profile. Add a profile photo. This should be the very first thing that you do. All photos will be reviewed before they will show on the app. Adding an artist image shows fans that you have a presence on GeoSarvan. Add links to social media. Adding links to your social media gives fans an opportunity to follow the artist on multiple platforms. This means that when they are not streaming your music, 
you have other ways to reach them through social media posts. You can add links to Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and Wikipedia. Add a bio. Biographies can be added to an artist's profile, but must be emailed to content-inquiries at sarvan.com and kept between 200 to 250 words. You can also share awards and nominations from a Wikipedia page and mention your top three songs. These submissions will be reviewed before they are added, so please allow time for them to become available. GeoSarvan Shorties Shorties are high-quality short videos for songs, similar to Spotify's Canvas. Listeners will be able to watch these videos on loop while listening to a song on the GeoSarvan app. These videos are 3 to 15 seconds long and play in vertical mode to show on listeners' phones. GeoSarvan Editorial Playlists Currently, the only known way to submit music for editorial playlist consideration is via the contact form located at artists.geosarvan.com. It is advised to include as much detail about the song as possible. Definitely include detail on language, genre, mood, and instruments used, etc. You can also suggest an editorial playlist that you think the song would be a good fit for. Bands in town for artists. Bands in Town has expanded their online tools. In 2020, the service previously known as Bands in Town Manager was relaunched as Bands in Town for Artists. Bands in Town allows artists to upload tour dates and promote shows to their 50 million registered users, as well as promoting across Billboard, Google, Facebook, Instagram, Amazon Alexa, and more. Here's a quick summary of the current features. All artists can sign up at artists.bandsintown.com. Artists on Bands in Town now have the ability to schedule posts to trackers in advance. Real-time analytics on artist posts. A daily flow of helpful tips, best practices, and music industry news from Bands in Town's artists resource Hypebot and an expanded Bands in Town for Artists blog a curated artist services section offering discounts and special offers for artist-focused products and services. Additionally, Bands in Town for Artists has a messaging platform. When a user follows an artist on Bands in Town, they become a tracker, which means they want to be updated when that artist is performing in their city. This messaging platform allows artists to send emails and push notifications to trackers. In addition, Messages can be scheduled and geo-targeted to trackers in a specific location. Artists can also send personalised messages to fans on Bands in Town and sync them across Facebook and Twitter simultaneously. This messaging service can be used to promote almost anything, not just tour dates. You can share new music releases, merchandise, music videos, secret shows and more. Social Media and Repurposing Content, contributed by Nick Dietrich. Now, more than ever in the history of the internet, it's vital to have a presence on social media. Whether it is a couple of pieces of content spread across socials every day or picking your favourite platforms, really push into your engagement. Make them your own. Send fans to that specific platform so they know what you're going to offer. For us, with Disco Fries, our current focus is driving our Twitch streams and further driving our new website, finishmytrack.com. In six months to a year, those goals could change and likely will, but we will always develop a strategy so it works for a term, three months, six months, or a year. We are strong believers in repurposing content. If we do an interview on Twitch, we will take the best clips and the most reacted to clips from that stream. We will cut them down, create captions, and then share these across our other socials, which are then drivers back to our Twitch stream. We also share these on our website, finishmytrack.com, which is also the title of our Twitch stream. Our stream drives ultimately to the Finish My Track website for producers and artists to get mixing, mastering, and additional production services. If you think of yourself as the center of your own universe brand, 
Whether you are a business or an artist brand, all roads should travel back to you in some form or another. Think of your social presence as your tentacles to bring people back to whatever your main focus is, whether that's a track, merch drop, or live activation. Repurposing content isn't just limited to social content. You can also utilize your song to make multiple pieces of content. Something as simple as taking a lyric or cover art and making it into canvas art can help engage fans in new ways and create new touch points for potential fans. You can also take elements of your song, such as unique elements of your vocal, one shots of guitars or synths, and any other unique parts that you've created, and develop your own sample pack which you can then resell. Of course, then you're creating a whole other piece of content you have to get out there and market. Ultimately, you can use that one piece of content and stretch it out into almost a month's worth of product, if not more. One of the biggest and most beneficial uses of socials for us has been engaging with our DMs, whether that's creating a personal connection with fans or reaching out to other artists personally, versus going through managers and agents. Having a personal connection with an artist to create collaboration opportunities is second to none. Checking our DMs literally changed our career. Tiesto reached out to us over DM. He was supporting our music at the time and reached out to us asking what we were working on. We met up and he asked us to work on his album. We co-produced his first platinum single in North America called Wasted, featuring Matthew Coma. If it wasn't for us being engaged in our DMs, that would never have happened. Never undervalue the idea of personal connection with an artist. Reaching out to people directly while respecting their time and inbox space, no matter if you're signed onto a huge label or you're just an artist on the rise, is meaningful to develop relationships. Follow Nick and the Disco Fries at finishmytrack.com and at the Disco Fries on socials. Playlists Create a great playlist. Playlists are one of the best ways to discover, share, and rediscover music, so it only makes sense to want to have one of your own. Creating a playlist is the first step in creating something of value that you can use as leverage when reaching out to share music with other curators, but first, let's make sure you have a great playlist. You have music. Even if it's just one song, it's a great song and you'd like to see it added to some playlists. The first thing you need to do is create a playlist that your song will fit into. Choose songs from artists similar to yourself or songs from a specific genre. Stuck on ideas? Here's a few to think about. Artists that inspired you to write your latest single. Songs that make you cry. Songs that you listen to while studying. Still stuck? Here's one more. Look up some of your local music venues and see which acts they are booking. After adding a few local artists to your playlists, make sure to reach out to them, letting them know you've added their music. You may find that once local artists begin to share your playlists, their fans start sharing it as well. You are a local artist too. There is no shame in adding your own music. Additionally, you are helping others in your own scene, which could lead to things outside of streaming, such as new gig opportunities. Playlist curation. Now you should hopefully have a playlist of 50 to 100 songs. Take your time here. Put the strongest songs at the start. If you are doing a pop playlist, put some well-known pop songs in the first 10 tracks. Most people decide whether they like a playlist by pressing play and skipping through the first few songs. After this is when you can take a risk and add something the listener may not know but keeping it relevant and making sure it fits with the rest of the songs on your playlist. Bonus tip. Did you notice I only told you to create one playlist? You should focus your energy on growing the followers on one to start with. I've seen artists make 20 to 30 playlists and then spend most of their studio time keeping them fresh. Keep it simple and do one playlist for now. Playlist artwork. Your playlists have to look as good as they sound. People see artwork before they click play. So boil some coffee and crack those knuckles and let's get designing. If graphic design is not one of your strengths, here's a tip.
go to a website like unsplash.com. Services like this enable you to download high-resolution images and artwork royalty-free. Once you have found a few images, go to canva.com. For someone who has little graphic design experience, this online service is a great place to start. Canva has free templates and text fonts for almost everything. Just drag your image in, change the text to your playlist name, and just like that, you look like a professional. If you have a logo, don't forget to include this in your artwork to raise awareness and maintain consistency with your branding. Playlist description. This is where you sell your playlist to potential new fans. If the description is all about the feelings people will be hit with once they press play, tell that in a brief story in two sentences or less. It's also essential to include keywords. When you search for anything in Google, you type a few words to make sure you get the most relevant search results at the top. This is the same when searching for playlists on a streaming service. If your playlist contains music spanning five genres, then list all five genres in the description. For the playlist title, make it something people want to hear and show some personality in it. Examples are Songs I Cried With My Cat To or Festival Season Bangers are clear descriptions of what to expect. Collaborative playlists. Most services allow users to create collaborative playlists. When shared, these playlists allow users to add, remove, and change the order of the songs in that playlist. This is useful when creating a playlist for your band, as all members can add songs from their own devices. I used this to build the order for my debut album with my band. Please keep in mind that if these are public, anyone can find them and make changes. Only share the link with trusted people and always make backups of these playlists to avoid losing hours of curation. Bonus tip. Create a second version of your popular playlist as an archive. This will be a permanent record of all songs you have supported. Artists can discover this long after you have supported them in your main playlist and this will direct artists to your brand. Playlists on multiple services. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. You have a great playlist on Spotify. Why not push the same playlist to YouTube Music, Napster, Pandora, Apple Music, Cobuzz, SoundCloud, Deezer, and more? Imagine how much more value your playlist would have if it was on all other primary streaming services. That's why I expanded my Spotify playlists to other DSPs. It probably sounds like a lot of work, but it isn't. Here are two services that will make your life a lot easier and save you from logging into multiple services each time you want to add a song to your playlist. Soundies. This service has a web-based interface that allows you to automatically synchronize your playlists, including description and song order with ads and removals to multiple platforms. Soundies also creates smart links, which can link to your playlist on multiple DSPs. You can even include links to your socials on the submission form. They also provide unique URLs you can share, which allow people to log in and stream your playlist on their desired streaming service, even if you don't have a profile set up on that streaming service. Soundies also syncs the playlist order, so if you put a new song at the top of your playlist and remove some songs, it will sync the playlist order across all platforms, currently with the exception of Apple Music. It is worth mentioning that this is only available through a web browser and there is no iOS or Android app at this time. Song Shift. SongShift is an iOS app for Apple devices. It offers more streaming services and also boasts an auto-sync option for paid subscribers. Auto-sync works well for pushing new songs to playlists. Keep in mind, this will only occur when the app is open, but you will receive notifications telling you to open the app and sync your new songs. Song positions in playlists don't sync and song removals are not synchronized. This app is good for a curator who wants to have their music on multiple services and won't ever remove songs from their playlist. 
I use SongShift to create a permanent backup of every song I have ever added to my main playlist. Grow your playlist following. You have started to get a following on your playlists. People are listening, talking about and sharing your music and playlists. Now it's time to take it to the next level. When you add a song to your playlist, kindly suggest to the artist that they share your playlist on their social media. In your message, you could have a friendly suggestion saying, quote, feel free to share the good news on your social media, end quote. Then include your social links in your signature so they can tag you. Don't ever include your personal social media links in your signature unless you want people hitting you up on your personal profiles. You can go one step further and have a pre-written tweet that the artist can copy and paste. This way you can make sure they tag you correctly and use the correct links. Bonus tip. Spotify has developed a great way for you to share your Spotify information by using special codes. Visit spotifycodes.com to find out about these codes and how they can enable you to share information and create marketing materials. Post playlist artwork. Post playlist artwork on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Tag all new artists whose music you have added that week. At the very least, you will get a like. Some artists may even reach out and ask for your email to send you more music. Either way, it is a win-win as you have a new connection. If you are not constantly changing your artwork, posting the exact same image every week is likely to cause you to lose followers. Short links. Use a URL shortener to turn those long URLs into something short and easy. Here's a few useful sites. sptfy.com shortens Spotify share links. bit.ly shortens any link. Use for your artist website, a YouTube video, social media, or almost anything online. toneden.io creates a fan link to share your album, playlist, and social media all on one page. Users can choose their favorite streaming service and it will direct them to your profile or playlist on that streaming service automatically. For example, fanlink.2 slash date night links to an artist profile on all streaming services. These services offer a number of added benefits, including click tracking, which means you can see how many people followed your link and where they came from. The other benefit of having a short link is for posts on services like Instagram that don't allow clickable links in the photo description. You can type in a short URL that's easy to remember, allowing users to manually type it into their web browser. Gates. A gate is a way to gift something in return for an action. For example, you can offer a free download of a song, ebook, or something else of value in return for a social action such as following a channel on YouTube, following a playlist on Spotify, or sharing a tweet, etc. You can create a gate using services like show.co or toneden.io. You can also create your gate by hiring a developer through a website like upwork.com. As always, do your research first and make sure your gate complies with the terms and conditions of the relevant streaming service. Bonus tip. Use a gate to grow your Spotify followers. You will notice that the more followers you have, the higher amount of streams will come through release radar. Marketing tools. Streaming services want you to share links to your profile, playlists, and music on their platform. They also want you to look good while doing it. Here are the current marketing websites for these streaming services that allow you to create banners, widgets, and custom links to share your releases on your website or social media. Apple Music, tools.applemusic.com. Deezer Developers, developers.deezer.com. Spotify, developer.spotify.com. Title, embed.title.com. YouTube Music, developers.google.com slash YouTube. Pitch your music to curators.
Now that you have value in your own playlists, you might find that other curators become more receptive to your emails. Ask permission before sending music. Showing respect from one curator to another. If the curator is also an artist or record label, you can add one of their songs to your playlist as a great icebreaker. Of course, be a good curator and only add music that is a good fit in your playlists. Think about it. How many times per day do curators receive emails that start with, I'm sure you get a lot of these emails, just stop. You aren't going to stand out if your approach is the same as everyone else. You are reaching out to an artist or label that is also a curator. Open by telling them the following, in this order. Number one, open by telling them the following, in this order. You added their song to your playlist, link. You would like to hear more music from them. Invite them to add you to their mailing list or send you new songs directly. That's it. I didn't ask them to listen to my music and I didn't even tell them I'm an artist? That's right. This isn't about you. This is about them. Send a nice email, LinkedIn email or Facebook DM. If they don't respond within three days, post on Twitter and Facebook. Share your playlist publicly and tag the artist saying something about why you like the song and why everyone needs to hear it. Lastly, mention it was added to your playlist and include a link. If this doesn't work, repeat for the next single from that artist. Keep doing this. If you add 20 songs by 20 artists you like to your playlist, you may only get one response. Imagine if you add 100 songs to your playlist. That's five new relationships starting to flourish. Once you have a direct line to the artist, start out by having brief, fun conversations. This will be a relief for them, and you may find that they will even start writing to you randomly to get something off their chest or to tell you about their fun weekend. Now that you've built some rapport, send an email with the following in this order. Hey, name, followed by one sentence of friendly banter so they know it's personal. I have added your new song to my playlist and I've included details below. But first, I've meant to ask if you are open to receive the occasional song submission from me for your playlist consideration. Let me know as I've got a new single coming out that would fit your X playlist. Lastly, here's a link to my playlist. I added your track to the top and will share the news on social media today. Organization is key. Once you get a yes, Start building your database. It's important to note the following details. Name, preferred genres, submission lead time. Where to submit. For example, do they prefer email, direct messages on Facebook or text messages? Link to their playlist profile. You don't want to have to keep asking where you can find their playlists. Phone number. Some curators may ask you to send submissions through text. City and country location. For example, if you have travel plans, you could grow the friendship by meeting in person. Reach out via LinkedIn. A free trial with LinkedIn gives you in-mail credits, which lets you message people even if you aren't connected. In-mail messages are taken more seriously because you've spent money to send that message, so it goes to the top of the recipient's inbox. Search for playlist curators or playlist editors. Bonus tip. Search for interns at record labels and playlist brands on LinkedIn. Interns are usually found proudly displaying their job title and email address on LinkedIn, which makes them easy to find and interact with. They tend to also be more responsive to in-mail messages. The Narrative. Contributed by Jay Gilbert. One of the most crucial elements to any marketing plan is the narrative. The narrative is a brief story about the artist, release, or song. Simply put, it conveys why anyone should care. The press release is the obvious way the narrative is communicated to the world, but there are so many other ways today, including the artist's website, socials, and it's even required for the Spotify track submission form. I often ask clients, if you had 30 seconds in an elevator to tell some important person about your band or release, what would you say? The entire team, management, label, distributor, 
publicist, etc. should all be on the same page communicating the same narrative. What makes you special as an artist? What is interesting about the release? Is it aspirational? Is it unusual? Did you overcome adversity? A good narrative can be a powerful tool in getting your message across, gaining attention, publicity, and ultimately more fans. Find out more about Jay at label-logic.net. How to Get Noticed, contributed by Uberjacked. As a producer and DJ, I get a lot of people asking me where they should focus if they want to get noticed. Whether it's for gigs or perhaps by a major distributor, here are three key things I tell artists to focus on. Networking. This is key. You need to meet people and they need to know you exist. First and foremost, they need to know what you are about. Shake hands at gigs. Send those emails. Ask fellow producers for introductions. Having someone know you is one step closer to working with them. Fanbase. You need to find your fanbase of diehard fans that will wear your logo on a t-shirt, bring their friends to your gigs and sing your praises from the rooftops. It's one thing for you to tell people how good you are, but to also have a small army ready to shout about your music and support you will cause others to take notice. This will naturally mean more fans and will eventually get you noticed by bookers, labels, and major artists you can collaborate with. Keep your fans engaged, work out what they want, why they follow you, and give it to them ideally daily, weekly, or as frequently as possible. Music. You've already been creating, improving, and sharing your music. Now that you've got a network and a fan base, it's time to share it with them. There is no point making the best music in the world if no one hears it. Don't sit on things too long. Know that the journey is about finishing and releasing content and music, not obsessing over one song for months because you feel it's your big tune. Trust me, you can never be 100% certain which will be your biggest song, so just put it out there and let the people decide. Find out more about Uberjacked at uberjacked.com. Music and Live Streaming Contributed by Karen Allen As an early supporter and evangelist for live streaming, I couldn't be more thrilled to see how many artists are discovering it, streaming their music and finding new audiences. The pandemic was certainly a motivator for artists to give it a try, but it's clear that it's a solid long-term strategy for independent artists. My book and course go deep on producing a channel on Twitch and growing audience there, but in reality, what I teach could apply towards Facebook, YouTube, Reddit, and even Instagram. The core products you will use, OBS for production and Streamlabs and Stream Elements for interactivity and off-platform monetization with your audience work on most platforms. In fact, the big takeaway for me from the explosion of musicians live streaming is that there is not just one way to do it. Artists were activating fan bases and getting discovered by music fans and monetizing in meaningful ways on all the platforms. Where to stream and what to do there really depends on how much time you have to commit and whether you have a fan base established somewhere already. The bottom line is that building on a new platform takes patience, consistency, and time. You didn't build your Instagram following overnight, and it will be the same on whichever platform you choose to stream on. If you don't have a lot of time, then stream where you have the most followers. If you do have time to devote to building on a new platform, I still think that Twitch has the best return on your investment in terms of audience development and monetization. Let's talk about some of the bigger platforms with live streaming. Twitch. Music was a growth category on Twitch before the pandemic and has absolutely exploded since. It may seem like it's saturated now, but I hear from artists that they are still able to join and successfully build channels. You will start as a community member, which means no monetization, but you can live stream and work your way up to affiliate. Once you have 50 followers, at least three average concurrent viewers, and a minimum number of streams under your belt, you'll be able to become an affiliate and can charge subscriptions for your channel. Viewers can give you bits, and viewers can earn points by watching, subbing, and generally participating in your stream. 
You can determine exactly what viewers will earn with points. You can also design your own emoji, also known as emotes, that viewers can use in your channel's chat and others. This is an important tool for branding and communicating with your audience, as the chat is the main way you will talk with your viewers and create community. The next step is partner. It takes a lot of time and growth metrics to earn partner, and it's not even guaranteed when you hit them. The main benefit of becoming a partner is you get more emotes and Twitch may offer promotional support. It's nice to get, but you certainly don't need it to do well on Twitch. Pro tip. If you are a reasonably established artist with a good-sized following, have your management contact Twitch to see if they can fast-track you to affiliate or partner or even pay you to stream. Twitch does paid content deals with artists who can commit to around 25 hours of streaming per month and bring their audience to Twitch. To meaningfully build an audience and earn revenue on Twitch as an indie artist, you'll need to stream at least three to five days a week, two to four hours per stream. The artists I've seen really grow on Twitch will stream a minimum of 15 to 20 hours per week. Don't panic, it's not all performance you'll typically get through a half a dozen or so songs per hour because you'll be spending time reading the chat and responding to the audience. This is super important because Twitch is not just a content platform, it's a community platform. What you're really doing is creating a space where people like to hang out and you are the ringleader of that space. It's incredibly important to get to know other streamers and support them. Music streamers on Twitch are great at what's known as coopetition. They will watch other streamers, subscribe to them, and even raid their channel when their stream is over. A raid is sending all of your audience into another stream at once. And in turn, hopefully those streamers will support them back. The music streamer community is very authentic and organic. It's important that you find other streamers you genuinely like watch their streams, and become part of their communities. Fakeness and self-promotion is really obvious and icky on Twitch. Look for other streamers you like who you also think you'd share your audience with. For example, if they raided you or you raided them, would at least half of the raiders stick around for an hour? If so, that's a successful raid. Another secret to growth on Twitch is Discord. Discord is a separate platform from Twitch that a lot of streamers use to talk with their fans between streams. You'll set up a server, which is free, on Discord and invite fans to join your server where you'll create a bunch of message boards on various topics. You can even create voice and video channels where you can talk or video conference with fans. Join the Discords of other streamers to see how they use it and get to know them and their communities better. Twitch is a lot, right? If that's all too much, then pick a platform where you already have an audience and stream there. Facebook. Facebook is getting better with live streaming. Their monetization tools are improving and they have ticketed live streams now as well. You will need a business page that's enabled for paid live streams. You can check for eligibility in your creator studio. Facebook is great because people can set reminders for your upcoming live streams and share your stream while you are live. That's really powerful. If you don't have stars enabled on your page, then you can point people to your Venmo or PayPal. Just keep an eye on incoming tips so you can thank people on the stream. You can use OBS to stream on Facebook or use their tools. I recommend OBS. You'll have more control over everything and can use Streamlabs or Stream Elements to build on-screen alerts when people like, share, tip, etc. YouTube. YouTube is fine if you have a lot of audience there, but I don't find that YouTube is as good as Facebook when it comes to alerting your audience that you're live and viewers certainly can't share the stream within YouTube. YouTube's general directory of streams live now is hard to find and pretty sparse you'll likely not get on it and have to promote the stream on your own. YouTube has a few options for monetization. Subscriptions, also known as memberships. Super Chat, which allows you to pin a chat comment 
at the top of the chat, and super stickers, also known as emojis. You have to qualify for each of these, and it's not easy unless your channel already has a lot of subscribers and views. If you are doing a video premiere on YouTube, I'd recommend doing a live stream there beforehand to generate excitement for it. You can even set up your stream to send all the viewers into the video premiere once the stream is over. It's kind of buried way down in the live stream setup options. Schedule a stream with YouTube Studio, then go to the content tab on YouTube Studio. Click live, then click your scheduled stream and scroll down and click show more to see all the advanced settings. You can stream directly from YouTube Studio, but I recommend you use OBS so you have more control over your visual presentation and can add in features from Streamlabs and Stream Elements. Instagram. Instagram will only show your stream to your followers. There is no way to promote a stream in advance other than making a regular post. If you stream from your phone, I really recommend getting an iRig or similar device so you can connect your audio interface directly and not have to rely on your phone's microphone. There is some monetization on Instagram, but it is minimal. The chat flies by fast and can be hard to keep track of. In general, I'm not a big fan of live streaming on Instagram, but if you have a lot of audience on there, then it's worth it to have that direct touch point with them. You can use OBS to stream to Instagram. Use a service like yellowduck.tv. You will lose some functions, such as it won't allow you to save your stream to Instagram TV, but you can save the stream to your computer and upload it later manually. TikTok. TikTok also will only show your stream to your followers. Because it's phone only, you have some of the same limitations as Instagram in terms of sound quality and reading the chat. TikTok has monetization and can be a lot of fun. You need at least 1,000 followers to live stream on TikTok. If you're doing well on that platform, start live streaming there and get to know your fans. Reddit. Reddit is the weird dark horse of live streaming platforms. There is no monetization, but there are not that many people streaming on there, so it's not that hard to get an audience if you're consistent and the audiences can be in the thousands, way more than you'd get on Twitch with the same amount of effort. If you post your Venmo or PayPal, you are likely to get tips. You will either go live from your phone using the Reddit app or go live from your desktop using a RPAN, which stands for Reddit Public Access Network. RPAN is a free software download and works a lot like OBS. You can find out how to live stream on Reddit by going to their help center at reddit.com. Ticketed platforms. There are so many options for ticketed live stream platforms and they are constantly changing, so I won't go through them here. In general, I recommend you do free live streaming on one of the platforms mentioned above and save the paid streams for special events. The point of live streaming is to build community, to make watching you perform a habit for your fans, and to provide a place for your fans to hang out with each other. Free is just a better day-to-day -day strategy for that than ticketed. Find out more about Karen at twitchformusicians.com. Use your phone as a webcam. Many of us are going live right now, whether it is hosting webinars, performing, gaming, attending meetings, or simply chatting. Let's be real, the webcam on most of our computers sucks and the quality just doesn't cut it. While recording a bunch of videos for my online course, I realized that the quality from my webcam on my old MacBook was quite poor, not to mention that there were issues with audio sync and lighting. I ended up using my phone to record, using the flash for additional lighting. This led to much higher quality videos. This got me thinking, if phones have significantly higher quality cameras than our computers, why can't we use our phone as a webcam? So I started searching. It turns out that if you do have a phone kicking around, even an older phone that perhaps you don't use anymore, you can use it as a webcam. It's as easy as connecting it to your computer and downloading a free app. 
The app I found and now use in place of my webcam is called Camo. They have a free version, which is what I currently use. The free version provides 720p resolution and simply requires downloading the app and connecting your phone via a cable to your computer. I have tested this with Twitch Studio, Zoom, StreamYard, Google Meet, and a handful of other live stream products, and it works effortlessly. The video quality is so good that I actually sold my external webcam and now use my iPhone as my webcam. What's really cool is that if you have multiple old phones or tablets lying around, you can connect them all and essentially change between different cameras. It looks great and it's also an awesome way to find a new use for those old devices. Pitching to playlists. Find curators using Chartmetric. Chartmetric lets you sift through almost every playlist and curator on Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon Music, YouTube Music, and Deezer. You can also filter out editorial playlists, only seeing independent third-party playlists. You can even filter to only see curators who have added their social media links, making it easier to narrow down your search to people who are easier to contact. Bonus tip. When reaching out to a curator, do not include any song links in your message. Ask them if they have a submission process. If they respond, thank them and follow their instructions. This will earn you instant respect from the curator because you asked them how to submit music to them instead of cold pitching, unlike everyone else. Ask permission, show respect, say thank you. Pitch via your distributor. Pitching your music correctly is a fine art that takes time to master. The good thing is that you are not alone. Here's one method for getting your music in front of the editorial teams at streaming services. While this information may not be in big neon lettering on your distributor's website, you may find through some research or by flat out asking them that your distributor has contacts at most major streaming services that they pitch to. Now, why wouldn't distributors advertise that they have these connections? Because they have thousands of new releases uploaded every week. If they offered this as a service on their front page, every artist would send them a pitch. This is why you have the upper hand. You are educated, you have great music, and you are prepared. Now, approaching your distributor is the same as approaching a curator. Don't hit them with a pitch. Ask if they have a submission process for consideration of upcoming releases to forward to their editorial contacts at streaming services. Important things to keep in mind. Distributors get lots of direct emails, so be patient and give them a few days before following up. If you still don't get a reply, try another contact method. Look for their artist or label relations contacts on LinkedIn and reach out with a brief, friendly message. Distributors need lead time, just like editorial teams at major streaming services. Give at least four weeks minimum before your release date. For example, if your song comes out April 29, you should email them in the middle of March to be safe. Paid pitching services. If you don't have the time or need a break from pitching, there are a number of services that will do the job for you. These services vary in price and offering. Do not take these as endorsements. The services provided are subject to change without notice. Instead, consider this as an outline of the kinds of services that are available. Playlist Push. This service is extremely detailed in comparison to others, but it comes at a premium price for larger campaigns. Playlist Push actively removes playlists with low monthly listeners and also bans bot playlists that have large follow accounts but no listeners. A nice touch here is that curators are given a follow button and encouraged to follow artists whose music they like. The process to add a song is easy and curators may be more likely to add due to how simple it is. They also have an option for TikTok campaigns. Submit Hub a service that was created by Jason Grishkoff, who runs a blog called Indie Shuffle. SubmitHub allows you to pitch to independent Spotify playlist curators, 
blogs, and YouTube channels. If you get stuck, there is a live chat room on the site with artists, curators, and Submit Hub staff available to answer your questions. There are both free and premium submission options, which are achieved by purchasing credits. For premium submissions, if a submitter does not receive a response within 48 hours, a refund in the form of a submission credit is honoured. Playlist pluggers. There is an extremely large number of playlist pluggers and Spotify PR companies out there. Do your research. Ask to see songs they've recently worked on and ask those artists for real feedback. It's common for an artist or label to pay multiple playlist pluggers and then only continue to work with the good ones. If something sounds too good to be true, it probably is. A few warning signs to look out for include free email accounts such as gmail.com and or no traceback to any team members on the website. You can also look them up on LinkedIn to see if they have real people working for them. Check out their public page on Facebook. See if any of your friends like the page. Then ask them if they have used their services. Lastly, you can comment on sites such as Reddit, asking if anyone has used them before. If people have had a bad experience, they will gladly speak up and save someone else from being ripped off. Hype Machine Hype Machine has been around since 2005 and is still referred to by many of my colleagues as their go-to for finding new music that has yet to hit streaming services. Hype Machine Rankings pulls data from hundreds of active music blogs and formulates it into charts. All songs are embedded from SoundCloud links, which means artists can upload music to SoundCloud even before it is released, allowing for a blog to premiere the song. It's also a little-known fact that some editorial team members at streaming services also subscribe to various music blogs and look to Hype Machine to find new artists that need to be discovered. Personally, I have seen a few artists charting on Hype Machine who are then added to popular discovery playlists such as Fresh Finds on Spotify the following week. While this isn't a guarantee, it's safe to say that being on Hype Machine will at least increase your chances of the right people hearing your music. Uniquely, being listed on Hype Machine is not achieved by sending them a pitch. The only way for your song to appear on the site is for one of these blogs to write about your song. You can find a list of all contributing blogs at hypem.com slash sites. If you're up for it, you can go through the entire list and work through every single blog, contacting them individually and trying to get them to check out your song. Keep in mind that there are many artists using the same method. So for every 200 emails you send, you may get five responses and possibly one blog feature. If this isn't soul crushing for you, then I highly recommend taking the time to do so. In Submit Hub, you also have the option to filter the blogs by genre, as well as only seeing blogs that are on Hype Machine. This means that you are now only focusing on blogs that could get you added to Hype Machine, as long as they write about your music. YouTube channels can grow your followers. There are some brands on YouTube with millions of followers. These channels are the result of one single curator or a team of curators spending countless hours sourcing amazing music, engaging with their audience, and building an organic following. These channels have built a large amount of trust through uploading great music. It's no surprise that many of these YouTube channels have ventured into the world of record labels. Since these YouTube channels are launching their own record labels, it makes sense that they are building their following on music streaming services, especially with their own playlists. There are two ways that YouTube channels are promoting their playlists and gaining more followers on their profile. Description. In the description, under the visuals, you may see links to the channel's Spotify playlist, the artist's profile, and social media. Gates. 
many of these YouTube channels will also offer a free download of a song and include their playlist in the gate. Ask them nicely if you can also add your streaming link in the gate. Given that the free download recipient has already decided that they want your song and like the channel they discovered it on, following you on a music streaming service should not be an issue. They get free music, you get a new fan, and the channel builds their following on another service. Making contacts. Best methods for contacting YouTube channel owners can vary. Here are some suggestions on how to make first contact. In the About page on the YouTube channel, there will be a button to view email address if they've chosen to list it. Locate the Facebook fan page for the channel. If they are open to receiving messages, you can reach them here. If the channel owner has a Twitter account with open DMs, you can also try messaging them here. LinkedIn, send an in-mail message. Submit Hub, make a free or paid submission. Before reaching out, take a look at the curator's profile to see if they mention a submission process. If they say something like, only submissions through email will be accepted, respect their wishes, don't slide into their DMs on Twitter. Make money as a curator. If you already have a playlist with a following, people are probably reaching out to you on social media or emailing you their music. Why not make some money, ethically, while you are listening through these submissions? Here are a list of websites that welcome curators to sign up and pay you for listening to submissions and giving constructive, useful feedback. Submit Hub. Having both a free and premium option, this credit-based service allows submitters to choose specific curators to send their music to. As a curator, you get paid for listening to every premium submission and providing feedback within 48 hours. Playlist Push. For a varying fee, based on genre and number of curators reached, Playlist Push offers paid campaigns for artist releases. Curators then have two weeks to respond and are monitored heavily to make sure their playlists have engaged listeners. Curators are rewarded a higher payout per submission review based on their following, engaged listeners, feedback value, and how long they leave a song in their playlist. Playlist Push also allows TikTok creators to sign up and get paid to create TikTok content. Sound Machine a background music service company supplying music to major fashion, hotel, restaurant, and coffee shop chains, as well as small businesses. Curators can sign up and make their playlists available for use in real brick and mortar stores and get paid for their efforts. Artists featured in their playlists also see potential exposure and income from in-store airplay. Curators can sign up on the form located at sound-machine.com slash register music curator. Be aware of websites that suggest to take payment to guarantee adding a song. This is Playola. Just don't do it. We'll get into more detail in the Payola versus Playola chapter. Creating a good playlist. Contributed by Luke. In my opinion, the best way to attract an audience to your playlist is to find a niche that is not heavily saturated. A few years back, this was the case with TikTok-themed playlists, but now it seems everyone is creating a TikTok hits playlist. If you create something that has already been done, you will find it far more challenging to get people to listen and follow your playlist with so much competition out there. You should choose a specific theme that you would like to curate for. It can be a special type of event or even a mood. Do not find a playlist already in your theme and just copy the track list. You will not get anyone coming to your playlist if yours is just a duplicate of someone else's. It is understandable that you will want to add a lot of popular songs already on the radio or doing well on streaming. That being said, you should also use this opportunity to insert some songs from lesser known artists to give them an opportunity to get heard. Not only is this beneficial to the artist, but it's also great for the listener as you are helping them to discover new music. 
it's important not to use long or extended versions of songs. Any song with a long intro or outro can cause people to skip that song or even worse, skip your playlist and start listening to another one. People bore easily. Do not buy any followers. People see right through this and it will impact your ranking on Spotify. You risk your playlist getting removed from Spotify and having to start all over again with zero followers. Artwork is important. Before people even press play, they will look at the artwork. If it's not attractive to them, they may move on to the next playlist. Tell people about your playlist on social media. Share updates when you make a significant update to the playlist and tell other artists when you add them so they can share the good news. In addition to being a playlist curator, I am also an artist. By creating my own playlists, I know that when I release music, I will always have a good home for it alongside the relevant playlists that I own. This also led me to create my own online community at songrocket.com where other curators, artists, and labels can connect with each other. Find out more about Luke at songrocket.com. The Power of Email Contributed by Cheryl B. Inglehart While you've got some work to do claiming accounts, pitching to curators and the like, there's a whole other avenue we can go down. Your fans. More specifically, your fan list, aka email list. People are three times as likely to click a link in an email than on social media which makes your email list prime real estate for sharing your artist streaming links and letting your fans make a dent in your streaming numbers for you. Here are a few strategies specifically around using your email list, no matter how big or how small it is. Pro email tips. Stick to short and sweet, curiosity-invoking subject lines. Leave the rest for the body of the email. The job of the subject line is to get them to open the email. Once they've opened, make sure you are only asking them to do one thing. Send them to one link. Talk about one platform you want them to follow you on. Make sure that one link appears several places throughout the email, including in the first part of the email, so they don't have to scroll to find it. If your email provider allows you to add an image that goes to your link as well as a button, this is a great spot to include the link. I like to see four placements of your link. Don't be afraid to send more than one email in a week about the same thing. You can change up the context. For example, if you are using the week to focus on Spotify, invite people to follow you in the first email and explain that your new music will end up in their release radar. The second email can be an invitation to listen to a specific song. If you have a song that would be good to listen to on a weekend, perhaps an upbeat, let your hair down type song, send it out on a Friday and encourage your audience to listen over the weekend. If you don't have a list yet or don't know where to start, that's okay. Just watch a couple of videos on your chosen email platform. The best email platform for you is the one you will master and use. If it seems overwhelming to send even one newsletter a year, don't stress, I've got you. First off, let's delete the word newsletter from our vocabulary. Newsletters are outdated and ineffective, mostly because we are now in a world where social media has conditioned us to expect the one topic post. We see a photo, there's a caption about that photo, and on we go. Email is the same idea. You may have many things to say and that's fine. But if you have different calls to action, then the best course of action is to split up those topics to different emails. Focus is your friend when it comes to email marketing. Here's a step-by-step -step way to look at email. We'll zoom out and look at the big picture, then get into the logistics and tech. Finally, we will tackle how to grow email lists, engage, and eventually monetize them. Let's think about email in stages. S-T-A-G-E-S. Such a good acronym for musicians, right? S. Strategy. 
Why do you want an email list? How do you think connecting with your fans regularly will support your career? If you don't know the answer to this, any email you send will feel like you're throwing spaghetti at the wall and seeing what sticks. This isn't a stage that needs tons of time to figure out. A strategy isn't a fancy long business plan. It's knowing what you want and then choosing actions to get you there. Which leads into the next stage. T. Technology. The tech of running a smooth and easy email list can be a major block for a lot of us. But with just a few minutes on YouTube after choosing your platform, you can be up and running. Your email platform is the program you use to bring in new subscribers and automate sending consistent content and updates. I recommend Kajabi for an all-inclusive experience. MailChimp, ActiveCampaign, and MailerLite are also great, but there are dozens more to choose from. Again, the best email platform for you is the one you will master and use. A. Attracting. This is the stage where your tech is fully set up and you are ready to attract the right people. In this stage, you're thinking about how you talk about your email list and where you will talk about it. Do you offer a free bundle of songs in exchange for an email? A discount code to your merch store? I like to give subscribers something when they first sign up. It's a gesture that says I value your email and that you are giving it to me. Here is a gift in exchange. Don't get hung up on what you're giving them. Remember, it's the gesture that counts. Just make sure this thing is easily consumable, as in not an entire book or an hour-long video. Once you have your submission form up and running on a page that explains what people are receiving when they sign up, it's time to put that link everywhere, including your email signature your about sections and bios in social media profiles. In the description and comments section of every live stream you do. And of course, talk about it in person and on any live videos or performances you do. People won't know about your email list until they hear about it. G, growth. This is the area that can cause another big block. Once you've got your friends and family on your list, then what? How do you expand beyond your own world on social media to grow that mailing list? There are many ways to do this, but for now, I'll focus on three. The first is to cross-promote with other musicians that also have mailing lists. You can send an email to your own list saying something like, Oh hey, I met this great musician and they're giving away one of their songs. Here's a link to go and grab it. As long as you know they have a great email list system going, you're providing your subscribers with great content and the other artist is doing the same while simultaneously sending new potential fans your way. The second way is to run ads. This is a whole other marketing beast, but ads on Facebook, Instagram, and audio ads on Spotify, directing people to a short link that allows them to sign up is a great way to go. The last way I like to expand my list is through brand partnerships. This can be with a venue you're playing at, through a brand you use, or gear company you're connected to. Making a request to highlight your free offer in exchange for whatever they need is a great place to start. E. Engagement. Once you've got people heading to your sign-up form and subscribing, this one key point is important to remember. New people on your list are not necessarily fans. They are subscribers. It is your job through your email content to turn them into fans. This is what engagement is all about. I'm a big fan of automation, emails that go out automatically based on a subscriber's behavior. This is a great system to get set up because you don't have to stress every month after sending out that newsletter or broadcast. Your subscribers will be taken along a journey with you even if you get kidnapped by aliens. Cool. The most important thing is to have a great welcome series set up so you can easily set up expectations and give them great content to keep them on your list for the long haul. Then you can set up a nurture series. These are emails that tell stories and get them interested in your journey and your craft. 
Be clear on what you're selling and when you will sell it. I call these the R-I-S-E series, RISE. It takes a little time to get organised, get outlines and get writing until all of these series are set up, but once they are, you're rolling an email magic. S. Selling. Monetizing your list and even promoting your music and streaming sites are all things you want to tackle in this stage of email. Promotion may not necessarily mean you're selling something. For example, creating a series of emails around following you on Instagram or Spotify will have a similar strategy to encouraging people to pre-order a new album. There is something important to you that will help you to accomplish a goal and you have a specific action you'd like the reader to take. These emails are different from nurture emails where you're sharing stories of your journey and there isn't necessarily an action to take. We don't want to cause promotion fatigue when we are always asking our fans to do something. This is why we want to be clear on our goal and the one main action we need them to take to help us get there. Email is one of the most underutilized tools in a musician's toolbox and the data shows it's not going anywhere soon. If you're just starting out, it's a perfect time to start an email list and bring people in on your music career growth. If you've got bunches of music released, sweet! You've got tons of content waiting to be shared with your future subscribers. If you have an established email list, even better. Figure out which area of playlisting you want to focus on first and bring your fans into that part of your music career. Tell them why it's important to you. They're going to want to get on board and help you. The worst thing a musician can do is tell their fans about their big goal but not have a response to, how can I help? Be ready with your specific call to action and be ready to yell it from the rooftops or at least through an email. Find out more about Cheryl at inthekeyofsuccess.com. Why your pitches aren't working. Ever wondered why your email pitches aren't receiving a positive response? or any response at all? These are examples of real emails that have been sent to real people. The first example, you don't include a link. If people have to do any additional work to find your song, you've already lost. If they are already reading your email, include a link and make it easy for them. This is, of course, under the assumption that you have already emailed the receiver before. I always advise artists to not send links in the first email. Instead, ask permission to send music and ask the curator if they have a submission process. If you follow their process and respect their inbox, you may find you have more success getting your music noticed by them in the future. You CC multiple people in the email. If you are pushing for a blog premiere and telling someone that you sent them your track first because they are special, send them an individual and personal email. If they are CC'd, it's obvious they are not the only recipient. It's impossible to feel, quote, special when you are one of 100 recipients. You've also just shared a list of email addresses that may be personal and will no doubt see a large amount of spam if it gets into the wrong hands. Small talk in emails. What if the recipient is ill? or dealing with a personal crisis. They could even be in an area dealing with a flood or extreme weather. This can come across as inconsiderate. Avoid small talk like asking someone how their family or how their health is. That's fine if you are already friends, but it's a little awkward in cold outreach and follow-up emails. Getting to the point and skipping past the small talk allows the reader to get to your music quicker and increase the chances of them clicking and listening. You attach files in an email. We aren't all blessed with high-speed, unlimited data or lots of storage on our devices for emails. By attaching an MP3, or yikes, a movie, you are forcing that recipient to download your song without giving them a choice. This slows down their email and will likely lead to your email being deleted once it has been finished downloading. I personally know people who block emails with large attachments, meaning your email may never even make it into their inbox. A streaming link with downloads enabled is far more acceptable. 
This can be a SoundCloud or Dropbox link where the recipient can click, stream, and download if they choose to. You tell them where to place your song in an email. Curators will make this decision themselves. This can be taken as an insult by telling them where to place your song. At the very least, it's rude. Let them listen and decide if and where it fits. Your goal is just to get them to listen. What curators look for. A common question I see on social media is, how do you choose which music goes into your playlists? I've seen this question asked many times online and wanted to share my answer with you. I can't speak for everyone, but for me, it's all about personal taste. For myself as a curator, choosing music comes down to a few things. Production quality. Is it mastered? Does it sound good when played alongside the other songs in the playlist? Is it a good song? Is there something that makes it stand out, whether it's well-written, features an amazing vocalist, or has a great story? Will it fit one of my current playlists? If a song is in a totally different genre to other songs, it can't be added. Explicit content. While I am okay with adding songs with explicit content on some playlists, this can be a deal breaker for some curators. Consider having a clean version of your song available as an alternative. Your distributor should be able to set this up for you. I listen to all music in the order it is submitted. Personally, I don't read press kits, bios, or even look up the artist on social media. I don't care if an artist has 100 streams or 1 million streams. If I like the song, I will add it. It's worth noting that since the first edition of Work Hard, Playlist Hard, I have stepped away from playlist curation. My focus is now on educating artists through this book and growing our online community at workhardplaylisthard.com. Create a release spreadsheet. Contributed by Kelly Lee. No matter what point you are at with your music, it's never too late to get organised. Make a spreadsheet of your catalogue that includes all of the key information about every song you've created. It will save you a lot of time and energy in the future. Let's say that you change distributors one day. You will need to transfer over your catalogue to a new distributor and they would need all ISRC and UPC codes. You can also include links to the release, such as song files, artwork and notes, in the spreadsheet as well. Having an up-to-date spreadsheet that lists every release, product code and creator information, such as writers and contributors, will keep you a step ahead when needing to reference your data. Connect with Kelly Lee at kelly-lee.com. Branding and Identity Contributed by Raiden. Branding encompasses everything from your musical signature to your visual aesthetic. It's a key part of your strategy that will help you stand out. Visually and sonically, your music should look and feel like you. Who is this you? It should start with the music. By now, you've probably locked in on a certain style of music you like to make. If you haven't, give yourself plenty of time. This is a big decision that will determine your path, genre, and even your industry. You'll need to examine your influences, find out what you're passionate about, and experiment hundreds of times to see what really vibes with you. Then, if you're like me, you'll probably release some music and change your mind all over again. Once you've figured out your sonic brand, move on to your visual identity. This can include everything from your fashion style and color palette to your social media look and logo. It should help bring your music to life. As needed, bring people on board at this stage to help illustrate your vision. A good logo designer, graphic artist, photographer, and even a stylist will take you a long way. Finally, a much more elusive part of your brand will be your messaging. Do some soul searching. Maybe do a lot. What do you stand for? What do you believe in? What do you want your music to make people feel? Your messaging can translate to moving love songs, such as John Legend or Sam Smith, 
heart-trending angst such as Billie Eilish, Olivia Rodrigo, female empowerment such as Beyonce, Christina Aguilera, and Pink, social initiatives such as Nipsey Hussle, Kendrick Lamar, and Common, or just straight-up party vibes such as LMFAO and Kesha in her early days. Anything goes, but be clear on what's going. Figure out who you are and then let your art tell the story. Connect with Ryden on socials at Official Ryden. Protect yourself. Now that you are growing, whether as an artist, curator, or both, you have something of value in your fans, followers, and your brand. You need to protect your social media profiles from hungry hackers who want to take over your fan page or delete your account. Unfortunately, there are shady people out there. Don't panic though. There are plenty of things you can do to make sure you protect all of your accounts. Follow these steps. Passwords. Change your passwords yearly and never use the same password again. Use a different password for each site. If someone gets to your Facebook password and it also happens to be the same password for your internet banking, you can find yourself in a world of trouble. Don't save passwords in online documents. Just assume that nothing stored online is safe. Buy a notebook, write them all down and put that notebook in your safe. Use long passwords. Hackers use bots to cycle through password combinations until they guess your password. The longer your password, the longer it will take them to guess, and by then you will have already changed your password. Two-factor authentication is an extra layer of security. In addition to entering your password, a short temporary password is sent to your phone and is also required to be entered before you can log into your account. App and website logins. Remember all those websites that allow you to log in with your Facebook account? Well, if someone hacks into your Facebook, guess what they will also have access to? This also applies to Google and other accounts. Whatever platform you use, search the Help Center and find out how to remove unnecessary third-party logins and apps that have access to your account. Music Release Strategies Create music for playlists. Curators add songs that fit into their playlists. The song must match a specific feel, genre, or style with the rest of the songs. Think about radio edits of songs. They are short and to the point. This is for time management and to keep the audience from changing stations. The same principle applies to playlists. This is why it's important to release a short version of your song specifically catered for playlists. Before we proceed, please don't let this ruin your creativity or originality. Finish the original unmodified version as intended and then work on a short edit that is geared towards fitting in playlists. Make a short version that will fit in popular playlists with other short songs or radio edits. Look at popular playlists on Spotify with similar music to what you are releasing. Listen to them and take note of the following. Song length. Is it less than four minutes? Intro length. Is it less than 15 seconds? Outro length. Is it less than 15 seconds? Song structure. Starting with the main hook, vocal, or is there something that lets people know what your song is about in the first 15 seconds? It's worth noting that playing a song only counts as a stream if people listen for more than 30 seconds. If they listen to your song for less than 30 seconds, it doesn't count and you don't get paid. You need to grab their attention early so they don't skip, then hold their attention at least past the first 30 seconds and hopefully for the rest of the song. This will give you an idea of what to do for your edit. Again, don't let this ruin your creativity. Finish your song first, then make an edit. You can include both versions by releasing the radio edit first as a single, then save the extended version with your epic intro for the album. Bonus tip. If you have a really long intro for your song, make it into a separate track. This way, if someone skips the intro, your song will play next. If they listen through your intro to the main song, you get two separate streams tallied. 
For an example of this, check out Date Night's self-titled album on Spotify. Keep in mind that for an intro or interlude track to also generate streaming revenue, it must be at least 30 seconds long. It's one thing to create a short version of your song. It's another to create music specifically for curators to potentially make a living strictly from being on playlists. There's no right or wrong, but the latter can be a huge blow to creativity. For some artists with a very niche market, however, this may be worth trying out. Let's take Lance Allen, for example. Lance is an extremely talented guitarist and has built a large following through his beautiful guitar covers and acoustic original productions. Initially, he got lucky with the Spotify algorithms, but this wasn't enough for Lance. Instead of sitting on his hands to wait and see if Spotify would support his newest single, Lance decided to approach independent curators with large followings himself. His next step, however, was pure genius. Lance didn't pitch his song to the curators. Instead, he asked them what they were looking for when considering song editions. This is the best way to get a curator's attention. Instead of telling them what you want, you're asking them what they are looking for. Let's say that a curator responds with, I'm looking for an acoustic cover of the new Bruno Mars song. I love the song, but my playlist is strictly acoustic covers. Lance can then go and record this, knowing that once the song is created, there is a very good chance this curator will be adding it to their playlist, especially knowing it was created specifically for them. Yes, Lance is a guitarist, but this can apply to a singer, songwriter, band, or even someone that can play one heck of a pan flute. <laughs> If you have a niche audience, I'm sure these curators would love to hear from you while supporting your releases. Collaborate with other artists. There are many benefits to collaborating with additional artists on a song. You can achieve a different sound or simply bring on a guest vocalist. The result can be unique and potentially loved by both your audience and theirs. The best part of this comes when releasing your music. Not only will the song reach your audience, it will also reach theirs. If you have 1,000 followers on Spotify and they have 1,000 followers, you have potentially doubled your audience for the track. To make sure you reach all followers, you need to have both artists listed as a main artist. If you have one artist listed as featuring, it won't reach their audience through the likes of Release Radar or necessarily show on their profile as one of their latest releases. In short, it may be buried further down on their artist profile. As another bonus, all main artists will have the opportunity to submit the song through Spotify for Artists. Bonus tip, you can currently include up to five artists as a main artist before the artist name will switch to various artists. If all artists involved are actively promoting, sharing and pitching the release, you have increased your chances significantly. If you start a new project under a new alias or a collaboration, you don't have to lose your followers. One example is Diplo and Mark Ronson. Both have huge follower counts. They started the project called Silk City, which had zero followers initially. Their debut single had four main artists tagged. Silk City, Diplo, Mark Ronson, and Dua Lipa. This meant that the debut single from their project would reach all of the combined followers for the four artists involved. With a combined follower count in the millions and guaranteed release radar placement if submitting more than seven days prior to release, this makes for a successful release regardless of what additional support they receive. Share your art with no strings attached. Contributed by Andy Connors. Whatever your art is, Music, comedy, sculpture, writing, cooking. Make a list of all of the other creators you love and appreciate. Write down the artists and creators in your world who have meant something to you. They can be labels, bands, venues, writers, or even people outside your discipline. Then share your art with them, no strings attached. Don't send a demo to a label you love and say, sign me. Instead, send your music with a note thanking them for what they do, 
for the records they released that got you through hard times, maybe even saved your life. And just let them know that you wanted to share your creation to say thank you. Do that with everyone on your list. Organically, you will start to see things happen. Conversations, messages, phone calls, other people sending you their own art, collaborations being arranged, new scenes forming, ongoing exchanges of art and ideas. Built into that will often be the thing you were after in the first place. A label wanting to release your record, another band wanting to play shows together, creators wanting to collaborate. Even if nothing happens, you've done something positive and beautiful. You've helped bolster your creator community, made the scene stronger, and potentially created new friendships. You've not only given your creation to people, but you've demonstrated your gratitude in the most beautiful way possible by sharing something you created with other people who will likely do the same. Absolutely continue to do all the things you already do. Promotion, PR, socials, etc. Follow all the advice in this book, add this to the mix and see what happens. Every little thing we can do to make our world of music a little more positive can only be a good thing. Check out Andy's music at aminorforest.com and myheartaninvertedflame.com. Music Publicity in 2022, contributed by Ariel Hyatt. Publicity is valuable to you as an artist because it can help you get exposure. It gives you something to leverage within the industry and share on your socials, website, and email list for extra traction and clout. In the minds of potential fans and listeners, it is always more believable when others say something about your music than when you say it yourself. Getting included in the media is essentially gaining a stamp of approval from music enthusiasts who take time to curate music. You probably want publicity because you would like to gain new listeners and fans. You may also be looking for name recognition and notoriety. Or perhaps you are deeply curious about what music media and tastemakers will say about your music. Maybe you think that if you get enough publicity, bigger and better things will happen for you. All of these reasons are valid. However, keep some things in mind. Here's the first harrowing statistic when attempting to do your own publicity. 75,000 new tracks are released on Spotify every single day. Here's a second one. According to Muck Rack, there are six PR pros to every one journalist. In short, whether you want to hire a publicist or do it yourself, there's a lot of competition. And here is a third and very important thing to understand. The zeitgeist. Today, chill wave, EDM and hip-hop are much easier to work than smooth jazz and children's music due to the fact that there are more outlets available for, quote, trendier music. Once a music blog or playlist begins to gain traction and solid social media numbers, hundreds of publicists, labels, managers and artists all start vying for inclusion. In order to stand out from the masses, you have to have an understanding of how to communicate effectively and you must also have a strategy. Music blogs and playlists frequently come and go. The reason for this is they are mostly created and run by fans who love music and are driven by passion. Sadly, passion doesn't pay the bills and over time their enthusiasm wanes and the blogs and playlists shut down. This means that as an artist, you must consistently cultivate new relationships with outlets as you release new music. What a music publicist does. A music publicist's job is to liaise with the press. In other words, a publicist establishes working relationships between you and those in the media. As already outlined in this guide, media means blogs, playlists, and mostly online publications that are appropriate for you. A publicist will save you a lot of time and work by leveraging their contacts and relationships. A strong publicist will be able to use these hard-won contacts to get you exposure that would otherwise take a lot of time to get on your own. The publicity that they place will help you establish your brand. Your publicist will increase your name awareness to key media, music bloggers, podcasters, playlisters, 
music journalists, tastemakers, some of whom are likely to pay attention to your music if a publicist they know and trust is introducing you. Additionally, a publicist will get you legitimate press quotes to add to your arsenal to attract more industry attention from booking agents, managers, etc. You should also add these quotes to your website, socials, and press kit. If they are strong, they will be with you for years to come. A great publicist can make your life easier and accelerate your music career. However, you should not expect your publicist to get you a booking agent, live gigs, a label, or a publishing deal. A savvy and well-connected music publicist may be able to hook you up with other industry connections, but it's not in their job description. Hiring a publicist should be like hiring another member of your band or adding a critical new member of your team, because that is exactly what you are doing. Everyone on your team has to be on the same page for you to advance. I advise you to choose someone you like and who is in alignment with your vision. You also want to make sure that the publicist's contact base is right for your genre of music and that they share in your short-term and long-term media goals. We have all heard the phrase, all publicity is good publicity. It's beneficial to truly understand this, and the truth is, the average person remembers very little of what they read. They are not going to remember a lukewarm review, or how large the playlist was that you were included on, only what was said or that you were included. A strong quote from the media or any playlist placement is beneficial no matter what outlet it comes from, because the quotes and the plays that are generated are yours to keep forever and can never be taken away. Find out more about Ariel at arielhyatt.com. ISRC codes and your release. The International Standard Recording Code, known as the ISRC, is used to uniquely identify sound recordings. Whenever you release a song through a distributor, an ISRC will be generated. These are extremely important if you intend to release a song as a single, then also include it in an EP or album. In the following example, I refer to the single Sick Boy from the band The Chainsmokers. The Chainsmokers already have a huge following, so naturally this song received millions of streams within its first two weeks of release. Here's the clever bit. A few weeks later, they released their next single, you Owe Me, as part of an EP with Sick Boy. The EP was titled Sick Boy... You Owe Me. Since Sick Boy retained its original ISRC, the new EP appeared to instantaneously have millions of streams. In reality, these streams were attributed to Sick Boy alone. On the outside, however, the EP looked like an instant success. They didn't stop there. A few weeks later, another single was released called Everybody Hates Me. This was released as an EP as well. This time, the EP included both prior releases, Sick Boy and You Owe Me. Once again, on the first day, the release stream counts were combined for this latest EP. This was all thanks to the ISRCs piecing everything together. Aside from building up stream counts on a song through multiple releases, this is also a useful tool to build traction for an album. You can release a song every week or two weeks and give each song a chance to shine in Release Radar, Discover Weekly, and other playlists, then give them another chance when the album is released. Look at other major artists like Diplo, Calvin Harris, Justin Timberlake, you can tell they have an album coming when you see multiple singles released within one calendar month. While your fan base may not be as big as these artists, there is nothing stopping you using these tactics while you grow your fan base. Go to any streaming service and look at the top 10 songs for an artist. If you see one instance of a song in the top 10 and you know that artist has released that song multiple times, perhaps including a remaster, then it is likely to be the result of them using the same ISRC. On the flip side, if you see the same song multiple times in an artist's top 10 songs, 
it is likely they have changed distributors and put the song out again, not using the existing ISRC code. This means that one song can show multiple times in their top 10, leaving less room for other songs. To see how this is applied, I encourage you to look at recent releases for artists such as The Chainsmokers on your preferred streaming platform. Instant Gratification Tracks Instant Gratification Tracks are individual tracks that are immediately available as part of a pre-order for an album. If you purchase an album as a pre-order, you may find that some of the tracks are available immediately to download or stream before the album is available. Artists can request to make tracks from an upcoming album available as instant gratification tracks by asking their label or distributor. Currently, this can only be done for iTunes, Apple Music, Amazon Music and Deezer. Want to really give your fans an incentive to pre-order your album? You can set up to 49% of the total number of tracks as instant gratification tracks. For instance, a maximum of 5 out of 12 tracks on an album. These tracks can be purchased individually. If someone pre-orders the album, they will also get those tracks instantly. Additionally, when making tracks available for instant gratification in iTunes, they will also be available to stream in Apple Music immediately. Pre-saves are the new pre-order. Remember when pre-ordering an album from your favourite band meant visiting your local record store and leaving your name and phone number to secure a physical copy? As the robots took over and technology advanced, people started purchasing their music digitally. This prompted the need for pre-orders to move from record stores to online. The benefit of a pre-order on iTunes, for example, was that people could pre-purchase your song, meaning that once the track was released, it would appear in the purchaser's library. The best part for an artist is that all of the pre-orders are counted on day one. This means that all the sales over the weeks leading up to that release are all calculated on release day. This strategy is how many labels and artists have a quote number one on iTunes on release day, even though the ranking falls in the days that will follow. With iTunes rumoured to phase out downloads in the future, it's time to plan ahead. This is where pre-saves come in. A pre-save is usually delivered in the form of a gate. It encourages fans to follow a simple action and in return be one of the first to hear an artist's new single. To set up a pre-save, you will need the Spotify URI or Apple ID of the song. These can be received from your distributor, sometimes four weeks in advance. Once you have these details, you can create a pre-save gate using one of the services mentioned earlier in this book. Once the song is closer to release, you may be able to paste the URI into Spotify's search bar. You will be able to see the artwork and track title, though you won't be able to play the song until the official release date. Instead, you will see the songs greyed out. This is fine. The save button will still be available to click. Fans can save your song to their Spotify library, meaning that as soon as your song goes live, it is already in their saved section. This makes them feel warm and tingly, knowing they can hear your song first. The other cool thing is that even though the songs are greyed out, users can still drag the song into their favourite playlists. As soon as the song goes live, it will already be in a bunch of your fans' playlists. Bonus tip. In the Spotify desktop app, go to the settings menu and select show unavailable songs in playlists. This will show you songs that aren't live yet, in other words, grayed out, so you can see if your song has been placed in a playlist before release day. You can also use this as a curator to drag a song into your playlist in the days before it goes live. Go to New Music Friday for another country that is in an earlier time zone than yours and you will see this in action. The Spotify pre-save, a good idea? Contributed by Jay Gilbert. A Spotify pre-save is the modern equivalent to the pre-order. Spotify doesn't officially offer the ability to pre-save music prior to release, but many platforms and distributors do. Is it a good idea? Yes and no. When it is a good idea is when real fans click the pre-save link. It takes them to a landing page to save your upcoming music. On release day, the music is automatically added to their Spotify music libraries. 
In theory, this shows Spotify that there are users saving your music and hopefully playing it. When it's not a good idea is when the users are clicking the link and receiving the music on the street date, but aren't actually listening to it. Here's an example of the latter. You create a pre-save link that says, pre-save and you will automatically be entered into a contest for a signed guitar. Thousands of people enter the competition for a chance to win the guitar. However, on street date, the music is added to their libraries and they don't listen to it. This shows Spotify that at worst, your fans aren't real, and at best, your fans aren't engaged. It's not always about the number of plays, followers, listeners, and playlists, but the right ones. Encourage the right audience to engage and follow you on Spotify so your new music drops into their Discover Weekly and Release Radar playlists. Don't send anyone to Spotify or a pre-save link that won't love your music. Find out more about Jay at label-logic.net. iTunes is still here. iTunes isn't gone. It's just tucked away in the settings menu in the music app. If you updated your Mac OS and found that iTunes mysteriously disappeared, you can turn it back on by going to Settings, General, and then checking the box next to iTunes Store. Going Far and Wide, contributed by Jez Ryan. Often, when I start working on a release campaign with an upcoming artist, I find they have this idea in their minds that they need to focus on their own country, city, or even just their hometown. The idea of pitching their music to a worldwide audience is something they've not even considered at such an early stage of their development. In my experience, I find it is very important to go far and wide with every release you do, especially for new and upcoming artists. Getting homegrown support is always great, of course, especially when it comes to selling tickets for shows. But why just focus on such a small group of people when you have access to the entire world? Pitching your music to a global market can potentially attract hundreds of thousands of streams on your song. Along with that, you should start to see a solid growth in your audience numbers as well. After a few releases, you will then be able to see which territories are resonating with your music the most. Spotify for Artists is a good tool for this. Those demographics can then be used to better refine your social media campaigns to help maximise click-through rates and streaming results. As your presence grows within the global music scene, you might also start to attract international touring opportunities, which is far more beneficial to your project than just selling tickets at a few of your favourite venues back home. With that said, usually as your presence grows on a global scale, it will also grow within your own territories. Before you know it, you might even find yourself being invited to perform at some of the biggest venues in your local areas. Find out more about Jez at acidstag.com and mammalsounds.com. Influencer marketing. From a quiet kid with a cool camera who takes great videos to Dwayne The Rock Johnson, influencers can be anyone. An influencer can be someone with a large following, but more importantly, they have a collection of engaged followers who listen to what they have to say. Earlier in this book, you were told to sign up with Instagram. If you have not done this yet, sign up now. I will wait. Here's some homework. Go on Instagram, find some people who share your passion outside of music. If you like video games, search the hashtag video games and find someone with a large following and lots of engagement on their posts. Take the time to follow 20 of these influencers and write meaningful comments on their posts. I don't mean... Nice video, I want to play that game. Be specific. Let's say they posted a video of them playing Grand Theft Auto V. Comment and say, Hey, I just finished the game with Trevor and found it was really tough, but I thought his ending was a much better story than the other two. Do you think he will return in the next GTA? What you've done is shown that you have paid attention to their video, made a thoughtful comment, and asked for their opinion. Now comes the exciting part. Turn on notifications for Instagram and be ready. If they respond to your comment, you're going to get notified because they will tag you in their reply. Then respond immediately when they are active on the app and engaged. 
your notification will be bumped to the top. If you are lucky enough to get another response, then ask them if you can send them a quick DM or email because you want to keep chatting and, quote, don't want to get lost in the comments, end quote. Once you are in the DM, don't talk about yourself. Just keep engaging them and asking great questions. This is developing the relationship. If you play it cool, you may find they follow you back, which is why it's important to never be fake in your social media profiles as well. After they follow you back, it's time to ask them a little more about themselves, such as, how long have you been a gamer? Or, do you have any other hobbies you enjoy? Once they respond, you will likely get a response followed by, how about yourself? Now this is when you tell them in two sentences what you are about. One example is, avid gamer from California, loved Nintendo, but now I'm all about PS5. I also make electronic music and dream to have a song featured in a video game. That works. Once you've let them know that you also create music, you've given them the opportunity to respond if they are interested. Now, be careful. It's still possible to scare them off. If they ask to hear some of your music, don't send them multiple links and DMs. Breathe and pick your best song that represents your sound. Tell them a little about the track you send them so they know what to prepare for. One example is, it's a deep electronic chill track that reminds me of driving home after a long day. Now, leave them to listen. If you haven't heard from them, but see they have posted new content online, it would be good to comment on the next post without mentioning your music. There is a good chance that if you give them enough time and then follow up, for example, two weeks, they will think you are chill and be more likely to respond. If they show any interest in your music, here's the cool part. Tell them that you would be happy to send them a copy of your song to use for free in any of their videos. This also means that you now have a chance to get your music in front of their audience. If they bite, be sure to send links to your social media with an easy download link. For example, Dropbox or Google Drive. This gives them everything they need. If they include your music in a video or post, you will most likely see your artist and song title in the description, as well as perhaps a tag in the comments and a link to your socials, which is once again why short links are important because Instagram does not allow clickable links in posts. Experiences. Contributed by Jay Gilbert. A great new revenue stream has emerged, ignited by services like Cameo, Frills, Patreon, Twitch, and OnlyFans. Making a sustainable career from solely music sales, streams, and downloads may not be a smart strategy today. Streaming is not the enemy, but a stream isn't monetarily worth the same as a download. A download isn't worth the same as a CD, and a CD isn't worth the same as a vinyl LP. Sync licensing, touring, and merch can also generate significant revenue, but so can experiences. What are experiences? Here's some examples. Paid meet and greets. Personal audio and video messages. Exclusive access. Recording and writing with your favourite artist. House concerts. Personalised and signed merch and handwritten lyrics. There's tons of potential here. During the pandemic, the accidentals offered hand-knitted scarves and D&D sessions. The Licorice Quartet still offer music lessons, writing sessions, and even record shopping and dinner with the band. Get creative, offer your fans something no one else can. Find out more about Jay at label-logic.net. Is it a good playlist? With so much focus and energy put towards getting on a playlist, there's also an ongoing concern about whether a playlist is actually going to help or hinder an artist. Here's a couple of ways to see if a playlist is delivering listeners. Please note that there is no way of knowing who these listeners are, so this information is best to be treated as general information. Spotify Discovered On Go to an artist profile and scroll down to the Discovered On section. This will show the playlists that are delivering the highest number of listeners. 
It will not show the number of listeners, but this is a good guide on which playlists are delivering the most listeners for that artist. If you click See All, you can currently see up to the top 50 playlists delivering monthly listeners on Spotify. This is available in the web app by going to open.spotify.com in your web browser and looking at an artist profile, then scrolling down to the Discovered On section. Deezer Playlists section. Deezer shows up to the top 100 playlists that are delivering listeners for an artist. For example, popular EDM artist Marshmallow has a large number of playlist ads on Deezer. The top 100 can be seen by going to his artist profile and looking at the playlist section. Here's a really helpful tool. Isitagoodplaylist.com You can paste in the link to any Spotify playlist and it will cross-reference both the songs featured in the playlist with the artist discovered on analytics to determine how well a playlist is delivering. It's free and doesn't require any account creation. Check your stats. If you have been added to a playlist, you will be able to see streams and listeners for that playlist by logging into your artist tools. For example, Apple Music for Artists or Spotify for Artists. This is a great way to see how much that playlist is driving listeners and streams. Is the playlist well curated? Listen to the playlist first. Do you enjoy listening? Is it well curated and something you would let play? Or is it so poorly curated that you want to skip? If you don't find enjoyment from the playlist, it is safe to say others may not either. Curators. You may think that by placing someone's song on your playlist, you are helping them. But that may not always be the case. If you have a chilled out study beats playlist and you put an upbeat electronic song in the middle of that playlist, you may get some listeners for that artist, but most listeners may skip that song. This will impact both that artist and related artists. It can actually hurt the artist long term. The Facebook birthday post. I can't take credit for being the first to think of this, but it's too brilliant not to share. This can be applied to promote a playlist, new song, or to get some follows on a new artist profile. If you have a birthday coming up on Facebook, by the way, don't be cheeky and change it, but you can follow these steps. Go to Privacy Settings, then Timeline, then Tagging, and change Who Can Post on Your Timeline to Only Me. Post a new profile photo with a great shot of yourself. In the photo description, mention how amazing it would be if everyone followed your new playlist, saved your new single, or followed your artist profile. People will be notified of your birthday a few days in advance, so post early. Remember that some of your friends may be located elsewhere in the world in different time zones. On the day of, Facebook will notify all of your friends that it is your birthday. When they go to post on your wall, there will be no option to do a new post, so they will comment on your most recent post. In this case, it will be your new profile photo. All of these comments and likes on your new photo will generate high engagement with your post, meaning it will appear in more of your friends' news feeds. Keep in mind that your Facebook profile is about you, a real person, so try to include a story with the photo to make it more interesting. For example, you could use a photo of you on a hike with the description, feeling on top of the world here at the mountain and super excited now to have my music on Spotify. Follow me here and then include a link. If you are feeling extra clever, you can also use a short link. Keep selling CDs. CDs are an additional revenue stream. I compare it to the feeling of going into a store and buying a product. It makes you feel good. Fans like me go to a show or buy CDs for this reason. They may never listen to or even unwrap the CD, but the purchase part of the process felt good knowing that the money went to the artist. What usually happens next is the fan gets in their car and then starts streaming that very same album via a streaming service. The artist now has revenue from the CD sale, let's say $5 profit per CD, as well as from the streaming service. I definitely don't recommend just handing out CDs for free to everyone you meet as it can cause people to not see value in your music. If someone pays for something, 
even just a few dollars, they are more likely to make time to listen or at least keep it in their car, on their bookshelf, etc. That CD may one day be passed on to a friend with a listen to this comment. That's word of mouth marketing. Want to increase the value of your CD? Make sure you sign it for the fan. If there is a personal message with their name on it, it is safe to assume they will keep it around. They may even take a photo and share it on social media. When looking at CD manufacturers, keep in mind that size matters. If you use full-size jewel cases for your CDs, the price of postage will increase. There's also the risk of the case being cracked during transit, and it doesn't really fit into a jacket pocket or purse as easily. I suggest looking at thin cardboard sleeves. Some distributors call these eco-packs, which, as the name suggests, are also good for the environment. Fans will be more likely to purchase these if they easily fit in their pocket. Say thank you. This may seem like an odd thing to mention, but always say thank you. It takes less than one second to say, and can be the difference between someone feeling happy with their decision to support you, or feel like they were not important enough to be thanked and their support was not valued. You will most likely not hear from them again if this is the case. If someone really helps you early in your career, don't ever forget them. Find a way to thank them. I have a friend who runs a large independent playlist network. He helped me immensely, both through supporting my music and with advice when it came to building my own playlists. It started as a thank you, then led to me booking a flight where he was speaking at a conference in another city. I shouted him a few beers. Shouting means buying in Australia. Years later, and now we are good friends and still share music and tips. That man's name is Carlos, and he is the founder of Indie Mono, one of the largest independent playlist brands on Spotify with over 4 million followers across all of their playlists. So, always say thank you. Remember those who supported you from the start. You never know where they may be in a few years' time. If one of you grows, you both grow. That and being grateful should hopefully come naturally. Here's some suggestions for different ways to say thank you. Share the playlist as your artist pick on your Spotify profile. Tweet and tag the curator, telling everyone to go and check out their playlist. Post a brief video of you in the studio thanking the curator for adding your song. Bonus tip. If you take a screenshot of a curator's playlist, be sure to click follow first so it shows that you are following and listening to their playlist. This makes the thank you more genuine and will likely receive a more positive response from the curator. The Power of Community Contributed by Dr. Sue Oreschin. What you do is not done in isolation. Community is both important and powerful. You can create one around what you do and also tapping into existing ones. You can develop a fan community and also an artist and or playlist community. A supportive community is also good for your mental health, especially in an industry where critique and rejection are inevitable from time to time. It can, however, be difficult to build your own from scratch. Fortunately, there are an increasing number of mutually supportive music communities, locally and on social media platforms, that can be tapped into. These communities are often very welcoming to newcomers. If they are online, they may include not just playlist creators and artists, but also radio or YouTube presenters, bloggers, independent record labels and promoters, etc. Online music communities tend to grow organically, so it's good to watch out for them and join those that appear suitable, welcoming, supportive and fun. It's a great way to get to know others in the music industry and tap into the experience and knowledge of others. For example, on Twitter, artists can be found supporting fellow artists by sharing new music across fan bases, sharing playlists and useful information, etc. Online communities are also often connected to physical communities. So while joining one may result in a wider fan base, DSP playlist placements, radio show plays, reviews, etc 
it can also lead to invitations to play live at gigs. Find out more about Sue at grassrootsmusicnetwork.org. Find more curators. Now that you are starting to make some strong connections with curators, the next step is to find ways to connect with others through them. Sometimes it is as simple as asking nicely. With these examples, it is important to put your own touch on the conversations and emails. Ask for an introduction. Once you have built rapport and have a curator that you speak with a few times per month, it's okay to ask them the following question. I've even got an example here for you. Hi, name. It's been a pleasure sharing music with you these last few months, and I'm so happy to be able to support your music as well. I was wondering if you have any other contacts that would be interested in a similar type of arrangement. I'd be happy to introduce you to some of my contacts in return, as I am sure we can help each other through facilitated introductions. In this email, I have explained why I am asking for other contacts, while also offering an introduction to my contacts, giving something of value in return. If you are asked to introduce one of your contacts, Ask them directly first to make sure they are okay with this. You don't want to upset your existing contacts who are already happily sharing music with you. What if a curator leaves their job? If you have developed a relationship with a curator and they have advised that they are leaving their job, you should follow these steps. Make yourself aware of the circumstances. If they are leaving their record label job to pursue their music career, you can assume they are leaving on good terms. Wish them all the best and ask if you can keep in touch as you'd love to hear about their next moves. You never know. They could move on to a bigger role in a similar company and you'll be glad they gave you their personal email or phone number. Once they have acknowledged your well wishes and shown they are happy to keep in touch, you can ask them if it's possible to be introduced to their successor as you would love to continue sharing music with them as well. There is nothing more valuable than a personal introduction, especially when it is from the previous staff member. It's like meeting a friend of a friend. There is instantly a level of comfort and trust involved. It's on you to build it from there. Bonus tip. When engagement with a contact is at its peak or after you have exchanged more than a couple of nice emails, it is a good time to connect on LinkedIn. A connection request on LinkedIn is far less invasive and more accepted in the early stage of a new relationship with a curator. The best part about requesting a new connection on LinkedIn is that you will get notified if they move on to another role or get promoted. The platform is also a great way to continue reaching them via messaging. Out of office responses. This is the next best thing to an introduction. Let's say you email your playlist curator at record label X and you receive an out of office response. There's little chance they are going to reply or place your song, but there is a very high chance they will include an alternative contact to reach out to in their absence. This is the perfect time to do a self introduction. Here's an example of how I would reach out. Please reword this yourself before sending. Hello, name. I usually share new music with John, and I know that he is currently on holiday in Hawaii, which I am extremely jealous of. I was told that you may be the best person to contact in his absence and wanted to reach out as I have new music to share if possible. If you are not the best contact for this, can you please point me towards them and I will be sure to spare your inbox from my musical pitches. All the best, Mike. It's important that I know John and well enough to know that he is on holiday in Hawaii. This will likely cause the recipient to keep reading. I didn't pitch in the email. I asked for permission, which is very important because if this email goes to the wrong person and there is a bunch of song links, they are likely to just move it to the I don't have time for this basket. Lastly, I gave them an opportunity to push me towards someone else, another contact, maybe a better contact for what I am looking for. If they respond positively, hit them with your song pitch and use a little charm. If all goes well, you may just have another contact at that record label. If they respond with another contact, you should reach out to them following the process again 
and explaining how you were connected. Work hard, podcast hard. It's not uncommon for artists to also have a podcast. Some of us use it as a way to show other passions. Whatever your reason, I wanted to share this quick summary of where you can go to make sure your podcast is available in as many places as possible. Listeners will use their app or service of choice, so don't miss out on potential listeners thinking you need to be exclusive to one platform. Unless someone offers you a highly lucrative deal to provide a podcast exclusively, there's no need to use only one provider. I submitted my podcast to all of these services successfully and, shameless plug, you can check it out at workhardplaylisthard.com by clicking on the podcast icon. Podcast platforms I was able to submit to include Amazon Music, Audible, Apple Podcasts, Breaker, Deezer, Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio, GeoSarvan, Pandora, Radio Public, Spotify, Stitcher, and TuneIn. A full list of all of these services with submission links can be found at workhardplaylisthard.com. Distribution. I use Anchor to distribute my podcast. They do a great job, but I found that by grabbing the RSS feed from Anchor in the settings menu, I was able to add my podcast to the above services. This makes my program reachable to an even wider audience, which is important to getting my message out and increasing the reach for my guests. There are also numerous other paid and free podcast services. Anchor was the right fit for me, but always do your own research and find the best solution for you. Social media posts. I use Headliner to create audiograms, which are social media-ready visualizers with images and transcriptions of the speech alongside a synced waveform. Headliner has a free option which I found more than sufficient. I then upload these visualizers to my Facebook page, Instagram, and YouTube channels. Payola versus Playola. Let's not mince words. Both are simply wrong and bad for the music industry. One is illegal. Payola is the act of paying for radio airplay without disclosing that the play was for pay. It's against US federal law. US airwaves are publicly owned and regulated by the FCC. Playola is the act of paying for placement in playlists in digital service providers like Spotify and Apple Music. While this may be unethical and is certainly against DSP terms of service, it is not illegal yet. DSP playlists can be broken down into two groups, user curated and DSP curated. If I create a playlist, it is user curated. If Spotify creates a playlist, it's DSP curated. There are also commercial services, as mentioned earlier in this book, that have networks of other users who will listen to submissions, give feedback, and sometimes even add songs to their playlists. This is not considered payola as they are being compensated for their feedback and playlist ads are not guaranteed. While everyone likes a quick win, please do your research. Follow the tips in this book to give your music the best chance to shine both long and short term. Find out more about Jay at label-logic.net. Final thoughts. This book has been a long time coming. I really wanted to share everything I wish I knew when I started out. I hope it's helped you. The industry is changing constantly and I'm always learning. Work Hard Playlist Hard will continue to be updated and revised and I will continue to share even more knowledge in the future. Since the first release, in 2018, a lot has changed in the music streaming world. A lot has changed for me as well. This book has opened up doors for me to participate in conference panels, host live workshops, appear on various podcasts, and even appear in my first live TV interview on CNBC with John Fort. None of this would have been possible if it wasn't for the amazing support I have received. Whether it was a tweet, email, or even just telling a friend, thank you. I feel a huge level of responsibility to make sure I continue delivering current and reliable information to help further your career. The music industry is an ever-evolving landscape. As this is now the second edition of the book, please don't hold back if there is something you would like me to add, expand, or update in a future edition. In the meantime, 
Go out there, keep creating, keep learning, and keep sharing. Thank you for listening. Mike Warner. Credits. Second edition edited by Erica Young. Cover art created by Spectator Jones. Written by and narrated by Mike Warner. Guest contributors in alphabetical order. Andy Connors. Ariel Hyatt. Bree Noble. Cheryl B. Inglehart. Chris Robley. Jay Gilbert. Yari Kirker. Jez Ryan. Karen Allen. Kelly Lee. Luke. Mark Tavern. Nick Dietrich. Nina Las Vegas. Ryden. Spectator Jones. Sue Oristchen. Troy Carter Jr. And Uberjacked. This audiobook was recorded and produced at Studio West in San Diego, California. Thank you. This book would not be possible without the support, patience, love, and encouragement I've received from so many of you. To my beautiful wife, my parents, my sister, family, friends, colleagues, artists, pets, and everyone I've had the pleasure of connecting with, thank you from the bottom of my heart. To think that this book almost never happened is scary. Self-doubt is real, and so is imposter syndrome. Yet, here we are, bigger and better. Thank you for listening to this book or picking up a physical copy. Investing in yourself and sharing what you've learned to help others. You are appreciated. Thank you, Erica, for being the glue that helped keep Work Hard Playlist Hard together when I needed to take some time offline in early 2020. It would not exist without your encouragement, dedication, and spirit. You are so greatly appreciated and go above and beyond. Thanks to all of the contributors that shared their time, knowledge, and feedback. This book is going to help a lot of people. It wouldn't be the same without your contributions. Thanks to all the fantastic people that booked me to speak, welcomed me into their office, classroom, computer screen, TV screen, bookstore, and conference rooms. There are so many more to thank that I would need to extend this book. I'll be sure to do it directly. Work Hard, Playlist Hard, written and narrated by Mike Warner, The End.